The following is an exclusive presentation of Jefferson Pilot Sports, a division of Jefferson Pilot Financial. some football on Jefferson Pilot Sports. Well, 107,000 fans have converged in a little neighborhood we'll call Neyland Stadium on the banks of the Tennessee River as our all-tell SEC Game of the Week features the Tennessee Volunteers, ranked number 10 in America, playing host to the Ole Miss Rebels. And welcome, everybody, to Knoxville, Tennessee. I am Dave Neal. So glad you could join us. And it has really been the talk of college football for the last five days, not an entire week, but five days, as the Tennessee Volunteers made their biggest second-half comeback under Philip Fulmer to knock off LSU and Baton Rouge on Monday night in overtime, 30-27. to 27. And Dave Rowe, as we look at this game, obviously a very important, impressive win. How will this team respond? I guess there's two aspects we have to keep an eye on. Absolutely, Dave. The mental side and the physical side. Mentally, it's not as tough when you come off a win, but physically, these players are exhausted. They gave everything they had Monday night. They have to come back, get right to work, rehydrate, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised if they didn't start off sluggish. Well, one guy who didn't play the whole game, but the minutes that he did play were very important. This guy, Rick Claus, and the left-hander. Dave, what does he bring to this team? Oh, he brings everything, Dave. He brings consistency. He brings control. He brings leadership. Those players step up. He brings efficiency, and most importantly, he brings wins. Yeah, he has certainly got control of this team right now. It's his club, win or lose today. On the other side, Michael Spurlock. We saw him a couple of weeks ago. Really kind of come out of his shell a little bit in Nashville. But some bad things happened along the way down the stretch, including a broken finger on his non-throwing hand. He played some last week in a loss to Wyoming. Dave Rowe, we will see him start today. What is his story? What is his situation? Well, Dave, he just has to play through the pain. He cannot run the option to his left because of the toss. You see the cast on his hand. He has difficulty handing off on plays that are run to his right. But in a game like this, you just play through the pain, forget about it, let the chips fall where they may. All right, well, let's open up the car door and find out what the Toyota keys to the game are today. Well, first of all, for Ole Miss, don't miss the start. Ole Miss Rebels have only scored 13 points, Dave, in the first half of the season. They can't afford to get off to a slow start like they do, like they have normally done, especially against a team like Tennessee. For Tennessee, it's easy. Contain Spurlock, keep him in the pocket. The key to this game is to not allow Spurlock to get outside of the pocket. Tennessee wants to pressure him, but keep him inside, Dave. All right, we will keep an eye on those elements of today's contest. And we'll also keep an eye on the man roaming the sidelines today once again, as he always does. Let's check in with Dave Baker on the sidelines. Buzz, what do you got? Hey, Dave, I thought it was awfully interesting yesterday when we had a chance to, to visit with Rick Clawson. It's been such an up and down year for him and a preseason for him as this quarterback battle has taken place. And you know, he seems like such a together kid, and he really is. But boy, when he didn't get that start nod last week, he just said, frankly, he thought about hitting the road. But he, but he felt too much loyalty to the guys here on the team, to the coaching staff. He was mad. He was angry. But boy, Dave Rowe, as you do, you just go ahead and you wait for your chance. And when he got it, did he make the most of it? He's hurting a little bit today. He just located two fingers in his right hand, his non-throwing hand during the game. They popped them back in, and he's got a sore Achilles that he's playing with. 
But boy, he'll get a lift from the ton of confidence he got in that big comeback on Monday night. Absolutely, Buzz. When he walks into that huddle, this team just responds to him. Shake off that dislocated finger that you talked about. Shake off that Achilles. And I'll tell you one thing, the leadership that he has in the huddle, Dave, is unbelievable. Well, his coach said that uh, uh, Rick Lawson is his guy today, and uh, he has settled on one guy, and he wished that he didn't have this situation. He wished that somebody from the opening game against UAB would have taken the spot at that quarterback position and, and run with it. But uh, Philip Fulmer now in his 14th season facing a man in his first year as a head coach at Ogeron. Now one and two in his opening campaign, and uh, he, in, in talking with him and our in our meetings with him, he still got the same fire, despite oh. the fact that this team has lost a couple of games in a row. Uh, we'll see how his team comes out and play. Well, Tennessee wins the toss; they defer, so Ole Miss will receive the opening kickoff. James Wilhoyt will have the honors. Mike Espy and Tay Biddle back to return for the Rebels. Wilhoyt's kick goes five yards deep in the end zone, and Biddle will take a knee. Let's take a look at our Chevy Ole Miss starting lineups. Mike Espy had a touchdown on a punt return against uh, Vanderbilt a couple of weeks ago. His first touchdown since 2003. He's a big play guy and also had a touchdown against Wyoming. Up front, this is a group that uh, certainly a work in progress, specifically the middle three. Michael Orr is a right guard, just a freshman. Coaches think the potential for him is unlimited, but still just a rookie in the Southeastern Conference. At quarterback, it'll be Michael Spurlock, who came in to replace Robert Lane last week in the loss to Wyoming. Said the left hand, uh, the broken finger on the left hand, didn't affect him as much as uh, some might have thought. First handoff, a loss of three on the play. It goes to the freshman, Miko McSwain, Justin Harrell. The first man on the spot for the Tennessee defense. And speaking of that, let's take a look at these guys. The front four, Dave, I don't think anybody's oh, better in the country. No, I think you're exactly right. Mahalona, he's the one that leads them up front. Harrelson is just as good. They have strength at all four positions, Dave. And your thoughts about this linebacker? Well, I love that number two, Kevin Simon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. He is built, and he can move to the ball. And, of course, uh, you'll see a lot of Jason Allen today, the All-American cornerback, moved over from safety a year ago. And... We'll talk more about him as the day unfolds. Spurlock throws to the near side. It goes to Pittman. Makes one man miss out over the 25. They will spot it at the 27. So that'll bring up a third down and three, a manageable down for Ole Miss. Really important that they get a first down in this situation, Dave. The one thing that you can do with, with a Tennessee team, if they're tired and everything, and they've had that short work week, is to come out, move the ball, move the chains, get those first downs, and take a little bit of that starch out of them. Third down conversions. They are last in the Southeastern Conference. They have had some very short drives all season long. They've kept their defense on the field. Here's Spurlock. Trying to shake three, can't do it. And he loses four yards on the play. Brought down by Paris Harrelson. Boy, they just swarmed this Tennessee offense, defense, I should say, gets off the ball. There's the snap. You see the catch hand down the bottom now. Back in the pocket, he's got a bailout. He's got, he's there pressuring him. And good play by Harrelson. Did you see how he came upfield, Dave? Kept him in that pocket and made him run inside, tackle to tackle. That is what the coaches, uh, specifically John Chavis, the defensive coordinator, told us is that we have got to make sure we keep containment on Spurlock. High kick. Lucas Taylor tells everybody to back away from it. It bounces at the 45, and it'll be down at the 43-yard line. Well, the big orange offense looks this way on our Chevy starting lineups. Gerald Riggs had almost 90 yards rushing against LSU, third in the conference in rushing overall. Up front for this group, uh, they have uh, gone with their fourth different alignment so far. Aaron Sears played every position except center in the game against yeah. LSU last week. Well, that just shows his talent when you're able to move along that line because it's quite different at tackle and guard. Out of the eye formation, Riggs the tailback. Clawson, quick drop. Over the middle, pass is caught in the Rebel territory at the 46-yard line by C.J. Fate, brought down by Jamarcus Sanford, who gets the start. We didn't know if he had played today because of a bad knee, but he will be in the lineup, obviously. 
this Ole Miss defense. Uh, the front four has improved, especially with the addition of McKinley Boykin, who has gradually worked his way back into the uh, Ed Ogeron uh, lineup. And in the middle, Robert Russell will be exchanging some plays with uh, Patrick Willis, who we saw warm up, and Willis on the field right now. Willis, the uh, All-American middle linebacker, Lawson to throw over the middle, wide open at C.J. Faton to the 30. Spins his way down to the 27-yard line. That will be a Tennessee first down, and Patrick Willis, along with Kelvin Robinson, bring him down a gain of 20. Dave, what makes this play work is the great fake by Clawson. Everybody bid on that weak side run. He rolls out naked. Look at this. Had nobody and waits for Faton to come across on that crossing pattern. That is what Clawson does so well. C.J. Faton with 14 receptions, averaging 11 and a half per catch this year. So it's first down and 10 from the 27. Inside handoff. Here's Riggs down to the 20-yard line. That'll be a gain of seven on the play. Let's check in with Dave Baker as more on that uh, Ole Miss middle linebacking situation, including Patrick Willis. Yeah, Dave, I had a chance to talk with Ed Orgeron before the game. He really did not expect Patrick Willis to go. He said he was going to see how he warmed up, see how he felt. He's got the bad knee that you talk about, but take a look at that right hand. It looks like something you tenderize meat with. How in the world, as a linebacker, do you play with something like that? But that's how important he is to this Ole Miss team. He's out there, and he's gaming it. He is one tough customer, and it uh, devastated him last week when he could not play against Wyoming. Clawson stands in that pocket over the middle. Pass is caught flag down at about the three-yard line. Pass caught by Jason Swain, brought down by Travis Johnson. That will be a Tennessee first down, setting up a first and goal if it stands from about the seven-yard line. And you get the call from our referee today, Thomas Ritter. Pass. Holding number 13 defense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is the first time. Well, thank you very much, Thomas. Look at our red zone stats against LSU. Tennessee, pretty impressive. Five out of five with four touchdowns. That's a look at the red zone powered by Honda Generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. Oh, heads up play by Clawson. Came in, got a free, got some free yardage with that hard count. Looks like Michael Bozeman, yeah. 72, might have uh, made some contact. And everybody always wonders, how can the nose tackle jump offside? The ball is right in front of them, but you get used to go on, you just get used to going on that snap count. Offside, defense number 76. Half the distance for the goal remains first half. Well, that's 72. What you do is your quarterback comes out and you get in a rhythm as a player and you just keep on hearing the same snap count. And you're off on the ball and all of a sudden he comes out and he does a hard count, emphasizes that second count and draws you offsides. First and goal from the three now out of the I formation. Riggs at tailback. Your fullback is Corey Anderson. 6'3", 275 pounds. Balls and checking off of the line of scrimmage. Straight ahead to Riggs. Down to the two and then slammed backwards by McKinley Boykin, a senior out of Bessemer, Alabama. I was watching Patrick Willis that time. Moves in there. Look at this. Inside. Get up in there. Stick him up in there. Boy, good movement. You see that big claw on that right-hand side? just can't grab with that you see the claw that he's got his whole hand wrapped up inside there Dave it's almost like it's almost like a bolo bag or something well if he had only half his hand wrapped up in there I'd like to see the size of that hand <laughs> well, <laughs> the, thing, the thing is is that he can move to the ball and get in position so well out of the eye it's Riggs stuffed again but he breaks it outside Riggs touchdown Tennessee Miss had a chance to lock him up at the goal line, but couldn't hold on. Well, I think it was Jeremy Garrett, 54, who had him right there. Yes, he did. He had him and did wrap him up. And heads up play by Riggs. You never let those feet stop turning. And he gets a touchdown out of what it would have been probably a yard loss. Third touchdown for Gerald Riggs. Of course, he closed the game in Baton Rouge on Monday night with the overtime touchdown. Will Hoyt to attempt the point after. It is perfect. So 
Tennessee. Takes their opening offensive possession. Marches it right down the field. Gerald Riggs with the touchdown and the ball's lead by seven. The Alltel SEC Game of the Week is being brought to you by Alltel. By Regions Bank. By Sitco. By Sonic Drive-Ins. By Safe Auto Insurance by Chevrolet and by Advance Auto Parts. Seven nothing, Tennessee leads Ole Miss. Twenty-four to go in the opening quarter. A little nifty drive by Tennessee. Shoot up three minutes and four seconds. It covered 56 yards. Uh, I think the key element was uh, Rick Clawson, three out of three on that drive, and that successful touchdown drive means another $500 for the SEC's education and initiative courtesy of Safe Auto Insurance Company. Call 1-800-SAFE-AUTO and you too can be a successful driver. Will Hoyt kicks it off. Another good kick. High and deep. And Biddle will take another deep at the same knee, about the same spot he took the opening kickoff. As always today, uh, we'll have the purple line out. And the first and ten line is presented by Nexium, the purple pill. And Dave, how about Rick Lawson in that first drive? Three out of three, 42 yards. I told you I like what he brings. He brings efficiency, Dave. He gets so much out of each pass. Now it's important that Ole Miss comes out and establish something. Even if they only get two or three first downs in a row, they have to do something. Spurlock going deep. Has a man open, and he overthrows Tay Biddle, who was wide open. Jonathan Hefney was in coverage for Tennessee, but Biddle had five steps past the last man in orange. Watch Biddle. He does an inside move, and then when he gets it, he just plants it. Now he uses that speed. And you're right, Dave. He's got him. There's nobody in the picture. Now there's help coming. Gosh, no. And look at Michael Spurlock going, oh, no. You don't want to overthrow that when he was too wide open. Well, that brings up uh, second down and 10. The play was certainly there for the Rebels. Here's McSwain flagged down and the freshman out over the 30. It'll be good enough for a first down, but that flag right in the area of holding. Omar Gaither with the tackle along with Jason Hall. But this is the same kind of thing that uh, Ole Miss has been battling the last couple of weeks offensively. As soon as they have something good or positive happen, they self-destruct. Yeah, you just, you just can't have penalties like that. Not when you pick up 12, 15 yards and you got a first down. And it was it was at the point of attack. I think it was on the back side. It might have been Bobby Harris, 75. Holding number 50 on the offense. 10-yard penalty. Remain second down. Well, you see what uh, Ole Miss has done offensively. They're just getting pounded in the time of possession game. They average a league low 5.2 plays per drive. Okay, and their time of possession per drive is one minute and 18 seconds. That is a uh, not a lot of time to uh, gather yourself if you're the defense for the Rebels. Spurlock chased, fires, picked off at the 17. Touchdown, Jonathan Wade and the Big Orange. It goes 10 yards and it's 13 nothing. Oh boy, did I say they were going to come out sluggish? They're not sluggish. Jason Hall had great quarterback pressure from the back side. You'll see him, he's 94, coming to the left of your screen. Spurlock couldn't even pull up. They're reading his eyes, and look at this. Great move, step right in front. Jonathan Wade just reading that quarterback's eye, steps right in front of that wide receiver. Buzz, you had a good look at it. Dave, you just got to know when to hold. I, I mean, right there, he's trying to make something happen. He could have easily thrown it in the ground or thrown it into the Ole Miss bench, a throw he cannot make. Going after his up and good, and Wade, who already had a fumble recovery this year, now adds an interception. This one goes 19 yards for the touchdown. The ball's leaded by two touchdowns. Back after a word from your local stations. SEC football is brought to you in part by Chevrolet. There is the man, Jonathan Wade. 19 yard interception return for a touchdown. And James Wilhoyt will now kick off for the third time. 
And pretty close to his last two kickoffs. This time, though, Biddle has a chance to return it. And he has tripped up at the 15-yard line. Altel presents Text to Win SEC Trivia Challenge. Today's question, who holds the SEC record for the highest completion percentage in a game? Is it Peyton Manning, Eli Manning, or T. Martin? Use your Altel wireless phone to text your answer to short co code SEC fan. That's 732-326, or visit jpsports.com to submit your answer. You will be entered to win a trip to the SEC championship game. Good crowd on hand, and this, this uh, Vol Nation uh, certainly back in the good spirits. The loss to Florida kind of diminished some, maybe some hopes and aspirations of this club, but uh, that win on Monday night has got these people believing again. Here's the toss sweep to Miko McSwain. He gets out to the 22-yard line. That'll be a gain of about seven on the play. Omar Gaither runs him down. Good to see Miko McSwain run that football. They, they like his ability to get outside. He's got good dart speed. Go outside. Use him a little bit. Use that speed. You sure weren't picking up anything with the pass. Well, Miko McSwain's a guy they felt, uh, Noel Mazzoni, the offensive coordinator, as you look at him right there, it said that we just got to get him the football. Yeah. He's a great receiver. He started in the spring as a defensive back. Then they moved him to wide receiver, and now he is being used as the tailback and he is th this is what's amazing to me is that he's averaging six yards a carry per game yeah. and he's the team's leading rusher he has 19 rushes for 216 yards runs of 60 53 and 28 he had 114 against wyoming you know what i would do I'd run him with the football until he proved that he couldn't get six yards to carry. Well, he, yeah, he has proven that he can do that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Little swing pass. A lot of room on the far side of the field. First down for the Rebels out over the 40. That's Mike Espy. And somebody obviously blew an assignment defensively. Nobody was in 15, 20 yards of Espy. Yeah, what they did on that play is they used Espy. You see him right there coming out of the backfield. They used him in a backfield position as a as a slot back in the in the formation. Again, coming out of the backfield, get him the football. He's got good speed. He just rolled out of the, out of the uh, backfield, and there was a backer supposed to have him, and he didn't get him. Good play call by Noah yes. He picks up the first down out, out over the 40 to the 41. Gain of 19 for the Rebs. Handoff goes to McSwain. So nice running between the tackles to the 45-yard line. Again, a four on the play. Interesting to watch Michael Spurlock hand the football off. Yeah, it is. He hands it off backhanded. Uh, you just have, uh, as Noel Mazzoni said, uh, Noel Mazzoni says it'll be the first time in the history of college football a quarterback's handed off to the right side with his right hand. Yeah, it's really odd because he almost twists the ball up backwards. And then I asked Noel Mazzoni in our conference call, and he said, he doesn't. He didn't have any problem with it. He said, "I expected to see fumbles and miss handoffs." And then he said, "You jinxed him by asking." Yeah, I know. If I recall, if yes. I recall that conversation. You, you were right. You're right. <laughs> Here's Spurlock rolling out. Pass caught at the 44-yard line. That'll be a first down. It's Espy again. Rashawn Fellows on the coverage, a gain of 11. So a couple of first downs now yeah. by Ole Miss. And I really like the way that Spurlock throws on the run. He's great getting out of the pocket. Espy does a drive and he comes back and that's good coverage. I mean that's tight coverage on on Espy but he comes back and he was a nice target. He needs to step up. You said that a couple weeks ago and he took off with a punt return for a touchdown. Up in Nashville the Rebs looking for any any spark and Espy provided it with a 51 yard punt return. There's a swing dancing around. Boy he looks hard to stop inside the 40. He didn't run that hard but nobody could get a hold of him I want to tell you something I right now if I was Noel Mazzoni I would not take that ball out of McSwain's hand every time he's picked up positive yardage Dave you get you just keep on going to him like I said until he proves he can't average six yards he's running against a tough Tennessee defense inside tackle to tackle Swain's led the team in rushing every game this year 205 pounder out of Rickton Mississippi See the left hand of the broken finger of Michael Spurlock. Spurlock fires, passes caught on the near side. That'll be another first down. Tay Biddle 
makes the catch. Jonathan Hefney runs him out of bounds. And Dave, that's Gain exactly what you need. You need that type of play selection. And it was outstanding. This drive, good play selection, four rushes, three passes, and he's mixing it up back and forth. He's found uh, uh, Espy. He's had McSwain. This is a good drive, and I really like the way that uh, that Spurlock is throwing the football. He's throwing a dart in there, Dave. Well, from one freshman to another, almost only decides to put Antonio Turner, a freshman out of Orlando, field, a true freshman, in at tailback. Whistles and flags. Michael Orr, the freshman right guard, looks like he might have uh, come out of his stance a little early. Boy, and that is something that just absolutely kills coaches. When you get that five-yard penalty for illegal movement. 74 offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. That is the true freshman or out of Memphis. Coaches like him, but he's just raw. You know, as, yeah. as Noel says, you know, he's got all the tools in the world, but it's just hard to throw a true freshman into the fires of the yeah. SEC. Well, a lot of teams, they they wean, they just kind of wean him in there a little bit. Orr's in there, and I mean, he's, he's first team right now, looks like for the rest of the season. Well, McSwain back in the game. And Spurlock tries to throw McSwain way but pressure came right away from Omar Gaither An outside linebacker was right in the face of Spurlock and one thing that John Chavis is doing on his defense for Tennessee is he's bringing edge pressure he knows he doesn't want to run Spurlock out of the out of the pocket so he's bringing that pressure from the outside edges Dave take a look at our Aaron scoreboard Texas on top of Missouri early Virginia Tech against West Virginia Michigan by seven Louisville trying to rebound after their tough loss to South Florida. Here, Ole Miss trying to rebound after two quick touchdowns by Tennessee. Here's McSwain, breaks a couple of tackles, still running. Down to the 33-yard line. Gaither finally drags him down. And Dave, one thing that makes great running backs is leg strength. When you get hit, and some people call it yards after contact. There he's hit. There he's hit again. Look at the leg strength driving the football he picks up about four yards after he's hit in the hole. Well, McSwain has been the workhorse on this drive. So far today six carries 17 yards. You don't want to throw an interception here you want to keep this drive. See if he doesn't throw that crossing pattern that's been open before. Spurlock. Air mails Larry Kendrick. That ball just floated on him, Dave. He never got it down. When that ball came off his hand, it just floated. I saw Espy on that crossing pattern. And oh, if he could have just waited a second. So Ole Miss will bring out the field goal unit, and Will Mosley will check in. Mosley with, with definitely the strongest leg of all the kickers. Ed Ogeron has had some uh, major issues with his kickers this year. So the long field goal is taken by Mosley, who is one out of three this year. 50 yards. Wow. It is perfect. Wow. Well, that might help the coach believe a little bit more in his field goal kicking unit. Mosley's only field goal this year was from 30 yards. He can now make that 50. And the Rebels are on the board. Here on the sidelines in Oxford, Will Mosley with that 50 yard field goal. Dave Neal, you, you know, Chris Rippon, who is the special teams coach for Ole Miss, the kicking situation's been so bad, he said, if you're kicking it well in pregame, you're the guy. Mosley <laughs> has not been the guy the last couple of weeks. And as a matter of fact, we were told before the game, don't expect him to punt, but I bet he does placement from now on. Yes, I would say that he's got a head start now. Lucas Taylor will take a knee after the Ole Miss kickoff. Time now for our Suzuki walk-on way of life featured player, and it's David Yancey who's made a name for himself here at the University of Tennessee. Uh, a backup running back that has uh, not seen a whole lot of time, but certainly in the mix. 144 career rushing yards to his credit. Walked onto this team, and uh, really, as we talked to Philip Fulmer about him last week, says he's just a classic example of a guy who uh, came in with a, enough talent, but more than that, came in with a big heart and a, and a desire to learn and, and get better. And, He's rewarded now, gets to wear the uh, Tennessee jersey every Saturday, be a part of this big Vol nation. Absolutely. Walk-ons are so important to programs. 
He had a big game. As a matter of fact, his best game last year was in uh, in the bowl game when he rushed for over 50 yards as the flag comes in late. Delay game on the offense. Five yard penalty remains first time. Well, Dave, and you, you think Phil the Fulmer looks out there and he says, how can that happen? You run off the sideline, but you've got to get out there and get huddled up and get quick. You look at the quarterback compl comparisons and, uh, you know, you look at the numbers. I mean, it's hard not to. <laughs> well, it's hard to make a case to, to put anybody else in but Rick Clausen. Well, you look at that last figure, it's efficiency. Lucas Taylor, the true freshman, out over the 15 to we'll give him a spot at about the 18-yard line. But Rick Lawson, though, David, and he said to us and that one of the things that disappointed him last week as they were getting ready for the LSU game and found out he wasn't going to be the starter was like, as he said to the coach, what else do I have to do? What else do I have to prove to you why I should be the quarterback? And, you know, I half hardly said, go out and play the second half at LSU and bring your club back from a 21-point deficit, I get. Uh, you know, and Eric Hange is definitely going to be the guy down oh, the road. I mean, there's, there is no doubt if you watch him practice how good that young man is. You're right, Dave. Ainge just got that strong arm. He can stretch him downfield. But uh, I think with Clawson, there you see Eric Ainge. He's, he's nervous on the sideline. He, you know, and great quarterbacks, they just want another chance. He just wants to get back in there. But Clawson, I could last that second half of the LSU game, I think is one of the great halves I've ever seen of football for a quarterback to come off the bench and the efficiency, just pick him, pick him, pick him, great play selections. He had a marvelous game. Third down and five now for Tennessee. Lawson has plenty of time to throw. Hits the fullback. Anderson throws off one defender. Tries to run over a second. Out to the 40-yard line. Patrick Willis was the man who had the big collision and finally brought him down a 15-yard gain. Touchdown, Tennessee. Dave, there's Kelvin First Robinson. Tennessee. Kelvin Robinson, 38. Not only did he not stay with him, then he misses the tackle. You've got to, you've got to wrap him up, Dave. If you don't bring him down, you've got to cover, you've got to wrap him up. First down and 10. Hand off to Riggs. Over the 45 to the 46. That'll be a bring up a second down and short situation. Quentin Taylor, the true freshman from Apopka, Florida, with the tackle. And Dave, so many times you can watch this Tennessee offense, and if you watch the fullback, Corey Anderson, just blow there. He leads the play. But they allow Riggs just to make a guess or a choice where he wants to run. Follows the fullback into the hole. That time he darted back weak side when he saw the offensive line cave the defensive line down. Very quiet stadium here in Neyland uh, with 107,000. So we can hear that collision right off the left side. Riggs met in the middle by Quentin Taylor. Jeremy Garrett. You have to have vision. Look at the line play. Everybody's stuck up there. That's pretty good line play. Now slide along. Come in there. You see Tay, Ten Taylor come in there. Makes a nice move. Coming in underneath. Underneath gets low. Makes a tackle. Heads up play. Riggs takes a breather. Arian Foster checks in on a third down and one situation. Out of the eye formation. Foster spins forward for the first down. Patrick Willis with the tackle. That'll move the change after the gain of three yards. And that's another good example of that fullback lead into the hole. Fullback comes up in. Big man on big man. See the fullback flash in there? He gets the first blocker. Then he just comes back off inside. Arian Foster, a freshman out of San Diego, California. He's uh, in the mix behind Gerald Riggs, along with Montario Hardesty, the true freshman from New Bern, North Carolina. Hardesty got his first action last week against LSU with a couple of carries. Coaches are very high about the uh, combination of Foster and Hardesty down the road. Lawson being chased, hit from behind. It'll be an incomplete pass. And that'll bring up second down and 10. Pressure came from Jamie Mitchell. 
Boy, Jamie Mitchell, number 77, had to come a long way on the play. All the way top of your screen, he's got to come all the way around the outside. Look at him. But he never gives up. That's the kind of play that Jamie Mitchell does. Senior, he's a big man, works hard. He just plays his own kind of game out there. This offensive line by Tennessee has uh, been at work in, pro in progress, I guess you could say. When they started fall practice, they kind of felt they had something to work with, but due to injuries, they've uh, gone with four different rotations. Here's Foster. He has some running room. Arian Foster to the 30. Knocked down at the 23-yard line by Jamarca Sanford. A gain of 25. Boy, what a block. Rob Smith, 52, gets on this screen. He's the center. He slides out there, and he picks up Jamie Mitchell. There you see him in the left of your screen going out there. Big Rob Smith, 308-pounder. Again, watch Rob Smith. There he is. Look at him pushing right outside there, number 52. Rob Smith, the junior out of Fort Thomas, Kentucky. Clawson. Back to pass. Has plenty of time. Decides just to throw it away. Souvenir for somebody in the front row. <laughs> yeah. That's why you pay the big bucks for those seats. And Phillip turns around and says, where was he throwing that one? But that's the kind of play that I think the difference between a seasoned quarterback and a young quarterback. I wonder if Ainge would have forced that ball in there, whereas Clawson just realized it wasn't there. He had taken a lot of time. Throw it away. Now that young man, I want to tell you, Eric Ainge has got some great talent, Dave. We've seen him throw the ball 50 yards with ease. Well, Ainge threw that in the first row. <laughs> uh, I mean, Clawson did, and Ainge would have thrown that about the 31st row. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Riggs in it, tailback, out of the eye. Clawson throws to a wide-open receiver, Jason Swain, who falls forward to the 11-yard line, but a flag is down. McBride and Sanford converge on the stop for the Rebels. Boy, it's right about where Clausen threw the ball, and it looks like Tennessee will be backing up. Holding number 54 on the offense, 10-yard penalty, replay the down. Eric Young, the sophomore, the guilty party. Yeah, that time, that was 54. That's Eric Young right here. Now he's going to hold Jamie Mitchell. Watch him going to the outside, getting that big shoulder right in there. When he goes outside, you see him pulling right there? That's holding. Well, that's a great shot. Our cameramen do a great job. Eric Young doesn't necessarily think so. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. So that will bring up a second down and 20. Five defensive backs, the old nickel package in for the Rebels. Quick hitter inside the 30 down to the 29-yard line. That goes to Brett Smith, his ninth catch this season. And one of the things the old Miss coaches told us is that we know that Clawson is going to complete passes. The deal with them is let him complete him short, come up and hit him. Don't allow him any yards after the tackle should be made. That's a good example right there. Complete for about two, three yards. You make the tackle, you bring up long distance. Passing game for Tennessee ranks in the middle of the pack, 223 yards per game, which is sixth in the SEC. Big down here, Dave. And that'll be it for the first quarter. As Tennessee strikes with a nice opening drive and then an interception as they come home from a trip to Baton Rouge just five days ago. They lead after one quarter of play, 14 to three, over the Ole Miss Rebels. <laughs> Wait a minute now. Well, we'll try to get you. Uh, we'll try to get you a little uh, response on that. <laughs> I'm letting you handle the uh, request. Britton Colquitt, <laughs> long line of uh, the Colquitt punters here at Tennessee. The redshirt freshman. Doesn't have to worry about punting right now as Tennessee is on the move. They look at a third and 15, however. Through the hands of Riggs, and that'll bring up a fourth down situation. Our Gatorade first quarter stats, as you might imagine, uh, pretty much dominated by Tennessee with the time of possession over eight minutes. 
And, the, and really the big play was the interception of Jonathan Wade. Yeah. You can handle a 7-3 game a lot better than 14-3. Yeah, if you were down 7-3 with those those yards, you'd say, man, we're lucky. But uh, that interception, that was just a mistake, as, as Dave Baker said. You just got, sometimes you just got to throw it away. You got to eat it. You got to take care of it. James Wilhoyt on to attempt the 44-yard field goal from the left hash mark. Wilhoyt, two out of four this year. And you can make it two out of five. So a good defensive stand by the Ole Miss Rebels, and they'll have the football in pretty good field position at the 27-yard line. Of course, a lot of people will be uh, focused on Tuscaloosa, Alabama today as the SEC race is heating up. Number five, Florida, number 15, Alabama. We saw the tide last week, Dave, and D'Amico Ryans, just one of a number of great, great defensive players. And Florida's offense looked to have, uh, looks to have gotten it together on Urban Meyer's system as they just thrashed through uh, Kentucky for 35 points in the second quarter last week. Yeah, that's going to be a great test, both sides of the ball. Here's Spurlock running left, throwing right, incomplete. Had a man open around midfield. That was Larry Kendrick, the senior from Haines City, Florida. The young man who uh, started his collegiate football career at Florida before going to junior college and making his way to Ole Miss. And Dave, that was interesting watching Spurlock. After he threw the incompletion, he told him, he said, you need to come across more shallow across the field. So I'm giving a little bit of direction there to Larry Kendrick. Yeah, that route was there. Yes. Antonio Turner in at tailback for Ole Miss, second down and 10. In motion is Espy. And Turner is met after a gain of close to two yards by Kevin Simon in the middle and Jason Allen. Boy, Kevin Simon just moves to the ball so well, Dave. He's got just such great basics. Watch this, how he stays square. You see his shoulders? And then he just gets out to the ball. He slides. A lot of backs or, or linebackers will turn and run. He slides laterally. So he's always square in the hole. Talking to John Chavis yesterday, Dave, he's, he's talking about, yet yeah, you see those 24 tackles on there. Based on the coaches' films and how they would give out tackles as opposed to the official score in a press box, he said Kevin Simon would have 35, 36 tackles. Uh, he just is, for whatever reason, he just hasn't gotten the credit for the amount of plays he made. And, and, and Philip Fulmer, I said, describe Kevin Simon for me this year. In one word, he said, unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely. Pass batted in the air, and it falls incomplete. Turk, uh, Tony McDaniel with the tip at the line of scrimmage. Well, when you're a defensive lineman, you got to get those hands up. you got a shorter quarterback, and you just get those hands up. You see that little just inverting hand there by Tony McDaniel, number 95? Just a little stray hand out there. Bang, you knock a ball down. Kind of like throwing through the woods. Will Mosley will punt it away. His first one travels 33 yards. Lucas Taylor back to return. Now, if he's standing on the hash, I think I would punt to the left hash. Get the ball away from him. Pretty good kick at the 32 where Taylor takes it to the 40. Seven yard line, a 15 yard return. Lucas Taylor might have won the uh, everyday punt return job here at Tennessee. They've needed some help in that department, and they may have found it. Back after this. Afternoon on the first day of October in Knoxville, Tennessee. 14 3, the ball's lead. A first down and 10, inside handoff. Goes to Riggs, spins outside, breaks a couple tackles. Inside the 45 to the 44, gain of nine and a half yards by Gerald Riggs. But Dave, so far we have kept a close eye on Rick Clawson and how he has managed this offense. It's been pretty impressive to this it, point. It certainly has. That first play when he did that little rollout, picks up his crossing pattern to Phaeton, then he's sitting back in the pocket, throws a crossing pattern. It's nice to see him accurate in all the phases of being a quarterback, not just sitting back in the pocket, but rolling out, leading his team. And as we say that, puts the football on the ground, but is able to recover it on second. Luckily, it was second and very short, so it'll be third, and they maybe lost a yard, so third and maybe a yard and a half now. And Ole Miss could uh, definitely use a uh, big stop here. Well, all you have to do is watch that fullback in this situation. You watch Corey Anderson, 45. 
You watch him lead in there. He's the lead blocker. He picks it up, and then Riggs just takes that ball. It's nothing fancy. Everybody knows it's coming. Third down, and they'll call it two. Now he audibleizes and gets out of the play. Offset eye with Anderson to the right. The handoff goes to Riggs. Riggs hit and falls forward just enough for the first down. Patrick Willis was there, and you just wonder, without that cast on his right hand, would he be able to have kept Gerald Riggs shy of the first down? Yeah, Dave, he's a one-armed tackler. That's all he is. He's getting in the way. He moves to the ball well, and you're right. We've seen Patrick Willis, when he wraps them up, I mean, they go down. Plays with great enthusiasm, good movement to the ball. He's got four tackles already in this game, and with one arm. And also, remember, a bad knee as well, so he is going at about 75% and still getting it done. Speaking of getting it done, pass is caught by Austin Rogers, the freshman out of Nashville, Tennessee, the true freshman, with his first catch of the year. Boy, what time that Clawson has to just sit back there. He's got those big offensive linemen up front there just fanning them out. I was watching number 70, Cody Douglas, that time. He just locked on his man. Nobody's getting through. They're not getting penetration. I wonder if Ole Miss will change and come with maybe some pressure to try to disrupt Clawson because he's sitting back there. First down and 10 from the 23. Clawson. Going for the end zone, just out of the reach of Brett Smith. Coverage from Jamarca Sanford, who's also playing today on a bad knee. Well, this is a well-thrown ball. He's going to throw it to the left corner. Look at this. See that pocket he has around him? If you want to get to him, you've got to come all the way around the outside. It's overthrown, but it's a good strike to Brett Smith. Good try going down there. I just like Clawson's play selection. Seven out of 11 for 105 yards. The SEC Player of the Week also for Rick Clawson. As he checks with Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator. Dave, what they do is they come out to a hard count to see what old Miss is in, then they call the play. Clawson going to the far side, looking once again for Austin Rogers, and that will bring up a third down and 10. There you see Randy Sanders. He, what they do is they come out, do that hard count, hope that they see Old Miss drop into their coverage, then they signal it in. Now, this is a big down for Clawson. Third down and 10. You don't have to throw it far. You just have to throw it with efficiency. Maybe look outside to maybe Chris Hannon, 13. I watched him come in. No, we haven't seen C.J. Fate. We'll yeah. check on his status since the opening uh, drive. He's got Team, four wides, Dave. Team's leading receiver not on the field right now. On a third and ten. Over the middle. Pass is caught. Jason Swain still going. And dropped at the eight. It'll be a first down, but he looked like a pinball after the 15-yard pickup. Brought down by McBride. Crossing pattern right across the middle, Dave. You're going to see it left to right come in here. Right there, you see him throw the ball. Great, just a great strike. Now look at the number of missed tackles. Two, three, four. There's the catch. Now watch the number of people that hit him. One, two, three. Good night. Well, that's almost four. About three and a half missed tackles on that play. Can't have that. First and goal from the eight. Riggs, maybe a yard. Corvelli Haynes came flying in from his in position to take Riggs to the ground and bring up a second down after the one yard pickup. Well, that was a good close by Haynes, 99. Came down the line. When you know it's inside, you can slide down inside hard. He just came down and made the tackle actually over top of the center. And Ogeron looking at his. Defensive calls. Of course, he's defensive coordinator and head coach for the Rebels. Got to get some pressure on the quarterback. Rick Clausen. Look, his receiver fell down in the corner of the end zone, which gave Dustin Muzan a chance to turn and possibly have a play on it. It was Chris Hannon in the corner of the end zone. 
Ole Miss defensively this year in the red zone. They've done a, a decent job. They are fourth in the league in red zone defense. They've only given up six touchdowns and 11 potential opportunities. That's a pretty good number, and they've uh, given up a couple of field goals. And that's a look at the red zone, powered by Honda Generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. You see that three defensive linemen up front there, Dave. That's all they're going to rush is just three. Unless they bring a backer. So they're, they're dropping for coverage. Just look at the number of people in the secondary zone coverage. They're dropping. It looks like they're going to drop eight. Nope, here comes pressure. Inside handoff. And it's stuffed by the Rebels. Quentin Taylor, the true freshman, came to fill the hole. And Ed Ogeron won that battle against Randy Sanders. Right there, number 10 on a blitz. They brought both backers inside. And, and Dave, they did not give it away. You'll see it right here. There he is. He's going to come in there, come in there. There's going to be the handoff. Look at this. Comes in clean. That's a great call. And the thing about it is they didn't give it away, Dave, before the snap. 25-yard field goal by Will Hoyt, who missed from 44 earlier today. Snap is good. The hold is good. And this kick is good. So Tennessee adds three more points. But Ed Ogeron likes the play of his true freshman linebacker. We'll return after a word from your local stations. You? Tennessee leads it by two touchdowns. 9.33 to go in the second quarter in our all-tell. SEC game of the week. You know, we talked about Fate not being in there since the opening drive. Buzz, you, uh, you've investigated. Any, any news? Not a lot, Dave. I mean, he just tweaked an ankle early on. They went in and checked it out. He's up uh, walking around on the sidelines. But uh, when, when you have guys that can uh, case, uh, catch it and run it like <laughs> right. Jason Swain, you don't have to rush back right. in quite as much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the Hannons, the Swains, the Meachams, the Taylors, the Smiths. Yeah, it's, uh, it's deep. Yeah. It's deep. Tay Biddle will take another knee in that end zone. So Ole Miss will bring it out to the 20. Well, log on to jpsports.com and find out all the information you want about the SEC and our game next week, which will feature the Mississippi State Bulldogs and the Florida Gators. It'll be a rematch of that outstanding showdown in Starkville a year ago. And you can log on to jpsports.com and click on the Regents Bank Road Trip Planner for the quickest routes and all the information you need traveling around the SEC. First and 10 for the Rebs from the 20. Spurlock throws near side. Has Pittman, but only a gain of two on the play. Spurlock now, five out of 11 for 48 yards. And that snapped a streak of uh, four straight incompletions. And Dave, one thing I noticed about Spurlock is he's not letting the hand bother him. I really thought the hand would bother him. But I see the ball's being delivered with great velocity. He's got good vision. He's not playing back there tentative. He's looking downfield. He's trying to find his wide receivers and even scrambled when he had to. So I think he's well for the, for the rest of this game. Larry Kendrick has some running room to the 30 and falls just shy of the first down. See where they spot it. Very close to the uh, purple line. Dave, there you see the ball now. See right there when he takes the football and throws it out. That's left-handed pass. No problem on that. He uses the sore hand on the bottom, so he's not catching with that ball. We call the catch hand is the top hand when he puts it up underneath the center. Ole Miss's offense on third downs this year. 12th in the league at 21%. One out of four today. This time they'll pick it up. They go to the fullback who barrels his way for the first down. That's Jason Cook somewhere in that pile. That's There's big you, Jason. Yeah, that's what you do in that situation. Just put that head down and start barreling through. You know what I was wondering when I was talking about that hand and cast? I wonder how many games you would have missed if you had broken uh, your finger. All season. <laughs> You know, I just I'm amazed at these guys yeah. and the injuries that they suffer and, and they just they, they, they get back up and respond right away. It's almost inhuman yeah. sometimes their ability to shrug off pain. Absolutely. And they told us that uh, uh, Clawson, he dislocated two fingers. They just popped them back on the, <laughs> on the sideline. Spurlock trying to run away from some pressure. Throws on the run back over the middle. Pass is caught. It's Tay Biddle with plenty of speed and running room. Out to midfield where he is met on the spot, driven back by Antoine Stewart, but they'll spot it near the 50-yard line. First down for Biddle and the Rebels. 
Boy, 93, Xavier Mitchell had great pressure on Spurlock. He's going to roll out to his left. Watch this when he gets out there. He's going to find Biddle. There's Biddle right there. Now watch him, number seven. He zips back inside. He just makes himself a target, and he throws that ball to him, and then Biddle uses that speed. But great vision by Spurlock running hard to the sideline, looking back, finding his receiver for a plus play. The flags are down. Marker on the play. Dead ball. Substitution infraction. On the offense, they had 12 players out of the huddle. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. It seems like uh, there you go again with uh, one of the mistakes. But uh, Buzz, what do you got? Confidence that time by Michael Spurlock on that play because that was a very similar sort of play to the one he had picked and that Wade brought back for the touchdown. Except this time he just kept rolling. He was still under the same amount of pressure, but he kept his vision on the field, threw it back to the middle, and and really kind of helped erase the memory of that uh, bad pick earlier. Yeah, it seems like uh, Spurlock's one of those young guys, Buzz, who. Uh, can respond after a, a bad situation like that. A senior at an Indianola, Mississippi. And we got to keep in mind also that this Ole Miss team going without uh, Mario Hill, their leading receiver with 14 catches uh, with a bad hamstring. And that's a big blow. Absolutely, Dave. Aaron's scoreboard looks like this Texas by eight over Missouri in the second. Ten point lead for the Hokies at halftime, and Michigan State and Michigan. Tied up at 21. Wisconsin by 10 and Louisville by 10. Austin College by a couple of touchdowns as well. Sterling. This is what the Tennessee coaches feared the most. Espy with the catch. That'll be two yards shy of the first down. Hit at the 42 yard line. Tackle made by Paris Harrelson Dave, but that is the nightmare coming true. Absolutely. Kevin Simon flushes him out of the pocket. They don't want to get him outside. He throws well on the run. Look at this. They let him get outside. I talked to Harrelson, number 98, Paris Harrelson. I said, what are you going to do? I said, you've got to get upfield. He said, if that inside's open, I'm taking it. Well, they let Spurlock get outside like that. That defeats the entire defense that Philip Fulmer and John Chavis have designed. Timeout taken by Spurlock. With 5.34 to go in the second quarter, looking at a third down and two. We'll take the timeout with them. Does it look big? Closed captioning for today's telecast is presented by Shut Sports, the gear that makes the game. Dave Neal, Dave Rowe, Dave Baker, our entire JP Sports crew. It was a great day for some football as Ole Miss looks at a third down and two. Handoff off the left side goes to Antonio Turner, and he did not make it. I don't think he got any positive yardage. Absolutely not. He got stuck right in the hole. No seams in this big defensive line. Look at them all step up. See the backers come in there. There's a little crease there. And boy, that is a tackle. That is meeting him right in the hole, square up, right in the face. It might have been Jason Allen. I thought it was number 18. Allen and Jason Mitchell, a couple of Jasons step in there. You know what? I'd go for it, too, in this situation. Out of the eye formation. Turner, the tailback, the true freshman. They'll go to the fullback, who is stuffed. Jason Cook hit by Paris Harrelson. And Ole Miss turns it over on downs. A loss of one on the play, but what a job oh. by Harrelson. Oh, Harrelson is number 98. He's the defensive end, and he just crushes down inside. There he is, top of your screen. He's going to come right down in there. Look at this, down inside the shoulder, meets him right in the hole. Wow, you can't draw it up any better than that. I'll tell you what, he just got past a really good tackle in Trey Stallings Absolutely. as well. Harrelson, by the way, had a career-high 10 tackles versus Ole Miss last year, including five tackles for loss. Something about the Rebels gets his motor going. Well, I had a good time talking with him yesterday, going over what would you do in this, what would you do in that. Very articulate, very well-educated young man. Here's Hardesty, the freshman with his first carry of the game, first action this afternoon, brought down by Quentin Taylor, Ontario Hardesty, the True freshman from New Bern, North Carolina. Coaches are real high on Hardesty. 
They were high on him in the fall practice, but early on in the first scrimmage suffered a thigh bruise that was uh, never really got better, and they couldn't use him in any contact situations. So they weren't real sure how he was going to handle the big stage, but uh, as he has gotten healthier, the coaches have gotten to know and like him a lot more. Here's the toss sweep to Hardesty. Dropped at the 45, Patrick Willis. Well, I'll tell you this, Patrick Willis, you talk about playing with heart. This is playing with heart. Watch 49 come in. They had double flankers out here. They had two big men. At, and he just, Patrick Willis just pops into the screen. Arm or no arm. Look at him. He waves that big thing saying no more. You look at uh, what Tennessee is trying to find, and that is somebody in the tailback rotation. Because after Gerald Riggs, there's not a whole lot there. Their uh, one rushing touchdown outside of Riggs was uh, a one-yard quarterback plunge last week by Clawson. And here is Rick to throw to Corey Anderson. Tripped up at the 45-and-a-half yard line by Quentin Taylor, and that will be good enough to move the chains. Well, and again, I know it sounds like, almost like a record, but Clawson, just enough to get the first down. He doesn't challenge his arm. He doesn't challenge the defense. He looks across the field, scans, reads it, comes off his keys, finds him out in the flat, and just dumps it to him. Dave, that is great football. That's why he's a winner. And as uh, Rick said to us yesterday, it just uh, when you can put together play after play after play, it just wears on a defense. Here's Hardesty, big hole off the left side. Try to keep his feet, falls at the 34, gain of 11, first down Tennessee. Sanford will get credit for the stop. Well, the way Hardesty goes through this hole, I think they may have found what they wanted. Good explosion. You see that little dart in there, that little sneaky little peek back in the inside. Then he just bursts outside. Big hole. Got to have that vision, good carrying of the football. That young man, if you want to carry the football, Tennessee, you better, you better protect it and run hard. On first down and 10 from the 34. Lawson to throw. Looking for Anderson who got uh, tangled up with Jamie Mitchell and couldn't shake free. That's a lot to get tangled up with big Jamie Mitchell. Six foot seven. That's an interesting formation, Dave. What they're doing is we look at Randy Sanders signaling the play. They're running two, they're running two slots. It's a double slot to the right side. Randy, the offensive coordinator here in uh, you know, he has certainly taken his fair share of heat, but uh, they keep finding a way to get it done. You better believe it. <laughs> you better believe it. Lawson to throw on the run, and Anderson drops a pass. Of course, anybody that watched Tennessee LSU knows that he dropped a uh, surefire touchdown late in that game off his fingertips. And here bobbled one again. Yeah, and I thought it quite interesting when you asked Philip Fulmer, did he just get mad at himself? He said that was so uncharacteristic. He's laid back, doesn't get upset. He was just upset with himself in that LSU game. That was a little bit different there, but a similar type of a pass. There's the freshman Quentin Taylor getting a lot of snaps today. Six foot, 235 pounder out of a pop to Florida. No bigger down than right here. Boss and pressure comes. He's hit. Ball in the air and it falls to the ground. But a big hit from Corvelli Haynes, who just laid out Rick Clawson. Oh man, Clawson had to see him. He's standing there. But Corvelli Haynes, number 99, comes all the way around the top of your screen, outside. You see him coming into the picture. Look, you can't see him. Oh man, that's where you want to pull it down, Rick Clawson. That's, just, that's a great play by a defensive end. Never to quit, Dave. So many people will give up when they come all the way around there because you're really out of the play. I think Clawson took quite a hit. Look at him getting sitting down on that bench. Will Hoyt will attempt a 51-yard field goal. Longest this year is 46. He has a couple of 50-yarders. This is blocked and will roll into the end zone. I think Jamie Mitchell got it. So the defense, as the Ole Miss bench erupts, makes another stand. Well, they got a great push in the middle, and when you kick a ball like that, you have to have a low trajectory. The ball has to come out low. Watch 77. He's right there in the middle. See him right there? Now watch. See if he doesn't get that hand up. There's the push right inside. Exactly, Dave. You called it. Jamie Mitchell, 77. I would give credit to the spotter, Kim Anderson, on that one. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
One out of, uh, excuse me, first and ten. With 2.25 to go for Ole Miss. At the 34, decent field position. Spurlock. Rolling left, throwing short. Look for the toughest play of the week and a chance to win a brand new Polaris ATV in the Polaris Tough Play of the Week contest. Visit PolarisToughPlays.com and watch clips of this week's toughest plays. Vote for your favorite and enter to win. Dave, I have to tell you that Michael Spurlock really is into this football game. I'm just watching him. That time he told Biddle to bring his pattern back. I think he's forgotten about all the pain that that hand has has for him. Well, Spurlock eight out of 14 today. And he has dropped at the 27. Robert Ayers, the freshman out of South Carolina. Boy, and Ayers is another one that just never gave up on the play. He's going to come around all the way from the outside to get him. Look at this. All the way from the outside. Spurlock bails out. He never quits. He comes all the way around the outside. Again, watch him left of your screen. See him. He never quits. And when Spurlock steps back up inside to come back outside on the, on the right side, he gets him. Ayers, a young man in high school, Dave, had a 28 tackle performance. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Play some well, be sure to stop into your local record store to get the latest album from country music's hottest duo. Hillbilly Deluxe from Brooks and Dunn has already climbed to number one on the country charts. Their debut single, Play Something Country, hit number one earlier in September. Now stations around the nation are playing their second single called Believe. And they are currently on tour on their Deuces Wild tour with Big and Rich and the Warner Bro Warren Brothers. And let's check in with Buzz. Hey, Dave, you know, as far as this Tennessee football team has been concerned, there has been a lot of discussion about what has gone on uh, off the field. And as a result of that, Philip Fulmer's really tried to get his hands on it. And I think he's done that since, er since early in the year. One of the things they've done is they've tried to do a lot of different team building things. They've got a wristband that says anything for the team. And you'll notice all the guys that are wearing this. This is a team that obviously you see what happens on Monday night, that they're very unified. But they're very unified off the field as well. And he has taken a heads-on approach to trying and going ahead and uh, clean up some of these problems off the field. And I, I know he's taking a lot of heat for the problems when they did happen. He's also got to get credit for addressing it head on and getting these guys flying right. Philip Fulmer wearing his wristband as Spurlock runs around, finds Kendrick at the 40, and Larry to the 42 yard line. That's still shy of the first down with under two minutes to go here in the first half. But just to follow that up, Dave, one of the guys that's been a key leader in that for Tennessee and Philip Fulmer is Jesse Mahalona, yeah. uh, the defensive tackle. He's a guy that got with the team, the whole team, and said, you know what? We are one team, one heartbeat. And he has made sure that that message is stuck with this club. And Philip Fulmer says you got to have seniors like that, like a Kevin Simon as well, who young guys look up to and respect and lead in a positive way. Absolutely. You lead by example. You see 55 there. He leads by example both on the field and off the field. Tennessee takes the timeout, Dave, and uh, that'll give us a chance to kind of revisit that uh, performance. And Jesse Mahalona was a big part of it on Monday night as Tennessee rallied from a 21 to nothing comeback. They finally got on the scoreboard midway through the third quarter as Rick Clawson hit Brett Smith. After an LSU field goal, Clawson then ran in from the one on fourth and goal to cut the lead to 24-14. Two minutes later, after the ball interception, Gerald Riggs would run in from two yards out. The balls would tie it up. Two minutes to go in regulation on a Will Hoyt 28-yard field goal. And then they completed the comeback with a tough, tough one-yard run from Gerald Riggs in overtime. Riggs would finish with 97 yards. Clawson with 196 yards passing in that game. Uh, 230 yards of total offense in the second half, including the 25 in overtime. Against 90 in the first half. And uh, that was a, a streak where they were shut out in the second half for first Florida, shut out in the first half against LSU. They've gone basically an entire game without scoring, and then boom, what happened? Well, I said to I said to a couple of coaches, I said, "What did you say to them at halftime?" And they said, "We didn't say anything. Everybody knew what we had to do to get back in that football game." I said, "Well, did Philip Fulmer rant and rave?" They said, "Never said a word." 
Good kick by Mosley. Taylor will field it at the 10. And Lucas dancing around to the 19-yard line with 128 to go before <laughs> halftime. So Tennessee burned their first time out, so there's two remaining for the Vols. They are at the 20, so well, you never know with Randy. See, we've seen enough Tennessee <laughs> yeah. games. You don't know if they're going to sit on and get, get to the locker room or uh, try to open it up. Well, they took a timeout to, to try to force a punt to get good punt coverage and or, or good punt block. So they, maybe they do have something, but you, you're right. With Randy Sanders, he can send them deep. He may want to get in field goal range. He may just take a knee. But those two wide outs at the top of your screen, I don't think he's uh, going to sit down and kneel on them. Riggs the tailback. Delay handoff to Gerald. And Riggs out to the 27, maybe 28 yard line. Quentin Taylor with his sixth stop of the game. Patrick Willis, by the way, with five tackles. And Dave, if you're if you're old miss right now, you don't hurry. They're gonna they're gonna huddle on the ball. Just let that clock keep on ticking down. You don't want to hurry. Slow to get up there. Riggs will pick up the first down out to the 38-yard line. Man, I watched, a gain of 10 on the play. Dave, I watched Gerald Riggs that time just put that head down. Number four, Brian Brown came up there. You want to see what it's like to be a defensive back? Watch right here. Watch four. Boom. <laughs> That's what you say. Well, Coach, I tripped him. I can promise you I tripped him. Gerald Riggs, just a, another great running back. Well, timeout taken by Tennessee. That'll leave them with one remaining as Riggs has picked up 59 yards on a dozen carries. But you know, Dave, every time you see Ole Miss, uh, one of the things that comes to mind is uh, the legendary John Vaught. The coach uh, put Ole Miss football on the map. And how about this? He is now 96 years old. He turned 96 back in May. Legendary Rebel head coach celebrated his birthday with some of his old friends, including All-Americans Billy Ray Adams and Jake Gibbs. Former kicker and now Ole Miss Chancellor Robert Kayat and one of his good friends over the last few years is sitting right next to him from LSU the 59 Heisman Trophy winner Billy Cannon remember Billy Cannon in 1958 on Halloween night ran the punt back against uh, that Ole Miss club oh. and uh, a play that will forever be remembered and those two have grown very close because of that one play you know they run that play every Halloween night in New Orleans every news service runs the midnight run yeah. of Billy Cannon well we certainly uh, want to say hello to coach Vaught who's been great to us oh. over the years and uh, you know he's back in Oxford watching this game and I uh, hope he's doing well 96 years young he's probably still driving those golf balls <laughs> off the back porch <laughs> here's claws out of the shotgun now Rick has time fires to nobody and I think that <laughs> trying to figure out who was closest but <laughs> look like maybe the deep receiver might have had a little miscommunication with his quarterback Robert Meacham. Yeah, what I thought he was going to do is I thought he was going to do an out, and he just took off long. And I think what Clawson did, just don't force it. Don't don't make a mistake. And that's a heads-up play. If, in fact, that's what he was planning to do, that's a heads-up play. This time they're in a five. Actually, a three-receiver set. Clawson bumps into his own guy and had it nearly picked off by... Jamie Mitchell at the line of scrimmage. That was a strange sequence of events. That was. What happened is he bumped into his own man. Clawson did. The center sits back. Watch him bump into his own center right there. Now he's got to get those hands up. Look at Jamie Mitchell. I talked about if you're not close, you get the hands up. But he bumps into his center right in there. No, nope, excuse me. I was 74 he bumped into. But then comes out and Jamie Mitchell. He almost threw Jamie Mitchell's hands. That could have... Uh gone haywire for the balls. Well, in this situation, if I'm Phil Fulmer, I don't know. I may just bring that ball down and go in at halftime 17 to 3. Lawson throws it at the oh. feet of Gerald Riggs. And guess who was standing right there next to Gerald Riggs? Number 77, Jamie Mitchell. Uh -huh. well, Mitchell has turned it up here in the second quarter. We asked the coaches about him, and he said, you know, Jamie's just Jamie. You just, uh, you know yep. what you're getting from Jamie. He's going to be there every single play, every single game. A consistent performer. Absolutely. 
So now that stops the clock with 43 seconds. Ole Miss with one timeout. A decent return by Espy, who was cer is certainly capable of taking it back for a touchdown. We saw it two weeks ago against Vanderbilt for 51 yards. So Britton Colquitt from the 25 will punt it away, and it's a good kick. That'll chase Espy inside the 20 down to the 19, and Espy is dropped at the 28-yard line, but a flag is down back at the 27. And this may be a cameo. What happened is Old Miss, Old Miss put pressure on. They were trying to block the punt. And watch him slide right underneath the punter. Right in there. You see him slide? Punter, whoa, falls over him. Looked like he got. <laughs> First down. Five yard variety. So wouldn't make a difference. And Tennessee doesn't want to give Espy another opportunity, so they'll. Just keep it at the 26-yard line. 42-yard punt with an 8-yard return and with 32 seconds to go before halftime. Well, maybe you throw one down the field. You got well, one timeout left, 32 seconds. If you connect, uh, hurry up. And try to get three on the board. I know I'd do it. I know I would do it. What do you got to lose? You got, you got three wide outs. You got uh, slot to the bottom side of the field. Throw that thing. That's what they will do with Spurlock, who has had trouble with that running left, throwing right pass in the second quarter today. He's left it short three or four times. Yeah, that's really tough, Dave. When you come across, when you run to the left and you're a right-handed quarterback, it is really takes a lot of discipline to square up those shoulders. It's much easier if you run to the right. The only problem that they have is they've got Paris Harrelson out there, Tennessee does, and he knows that Harrelson will run him down. So second down and 10. Spurlock, 9 out of 17 for 94 yards. Drops the snap. This is what they were worried about, but he falls on it. Wow, that could have been a disaster. I thought that Tennessee was offsides on that play. I really did. I thought top of the screen. I thought they jumped offside. Look at that pass rush up the middle. Just coming up inside. Harrelson just getting that shoulder inside. I just thought they were offsides at the top at the left of your screen, but evidently not. And with that, Ole Miss will let the clock run out. Tennessee with two quick touchdowns and a James Will Hoyt field goal. They have posted 17 points on the board. Will Mosley from 50 yards out was the only points for the Rebels as we have hit intermission with Tennessee leading by two touchdowns over the 10th ranked falls. Let's check in with Buzz. Coach, I know you're concerned about the short week, but your guys came out with a lot of hop, got out to that early lead. Yeah, we played well in the first quarter. I'd like to have had a couple of those scores that we didn't get, but um, obviously if you know, if we don't give up anything, we got a good good chance to do it here. I'm proud of our kids and big second half for us. All right, thanks, Philip. We appreciate it. That's Philip Fulmer, obviously pleased with the start, but not as happy as the second quarter. Nonetheless, his Vols lead 17-3 here in Knoxville. SEC football is brought to you by Aaron Sales and Lease Ownership, by Pontiac, by Sonic Drive-In, by Safe Auto Insurance, by Advance Auto Parts, by Pizza Hut, and by GMC. By Polaris ATV. By Bell South. And by BC Headache Powder. Tennessee leading by two touchdowns as we get close to the opening of the third quarter on an absolutely gorgeous day on the banks of the Tennessee River. Moments ago, Dave Baker caught up with the Ole Miss head coach. Coach, you got a little shell shocked early, but your guys came back. Yeah. Your defense played well second. Yeah, quarter. our guys are fighting. We did well on third down. This is a big series it's coming up. I'm proud of the way our team's fighting today. All right, thanks, coach. Best of luck. Ed Ogeron, Dave. Thank you, Buzz. A lot of energy from Mr. Ogeron. But you know, earlier today was an emotional time here uh, for this Tennessee crowd because they had a chance to. Uh, Remember and, and think about it and reflect on one of the greatest players to ever come through the University of Tennessee offensively or defensively number 92 Reggie White. We all know he had an unbelievable NFL Hall of Fame career. 
But his career at Tennessee was uh, unparalleled when you go back and think about what he did as a defensive end. And there is a portrait that has been put together by an artist and being sold with all donations going to hurricane relief funds. And earlier today, his family was given a jersey and his number was retired forever here at the University of Tennessee. A big emotional time before the game today. And certainly the Tennessee fans uh, finally, re finally remember one of the greatest to ever play college football. And Dave, you and I were talking as we were watching that ceremony. You're going, he was, uh, he was pretty good. And, yes. they, and there was another guy that played in here that was also yeah. pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Doug Atkins played one side and Reggie White played the other. And it's interesting because I got to play with Doug Atkins, who I, who I think is one of the great players of all time. I got to watch Reggie White, who I know was one of the great all-time players. The opening kickoff taken by Arian Foster, and he just uh, quietly sneaks it up to the 30-yard line. And our Chick-fil-A nugget of today's game takes a look at uh, some of the numbers retired by the University of Tennessee. And you can add on there, down the road, Peyton Manning and Doug Atkins. They will be uh, have ceremonies on October 29th for Peyton and on November 19th for the man you spoke of moments ago, Doug Atkins. That's our Chick-fil-A nugget of the game. And that number 16 currently being worn right now by that man under center, Mr. Rick Clawson. Oh, big hit up front in the middle. Who else but Patrick Willis, tackle number eight, his loudest of the game. You know what? I keep on thinking to myself, he's got one arm, but he is playing inspired football with one arm. Listen to this smack, just bang. Your smack didn't do it justice. There's 49. You're going to see so 40. Just so you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 49 is to the left of your screen. Watch him step up in here. Look at him come right up in there, just square up in the hole. Boy, that's the way you attack. I am impressed with this young man uh, playing in a lot of pain with a bad knee, a broken finger, middle finger, and still getting it done. Clawson misfires on the first pass of the second half. Let's check in with Dave Baker. Buzz, what do you got? Not a good sign for Tennessee early on, Dave. Just before that play, Aaron Sears, the big left tackle that Philip Fulmer just raves about, went limping off the field. He had trouble getting to the sideline. Looks like he's got an ankle problem. But Eric Young, the 6'4", 310-pound sophomore, he got thrown into the fire on Monday night. They were real pleased with what they got out of him, and he'll have to step up now. Boy, Rick Clawson has missed his last seven attempts, Buzz. Uh, to follow up that Aaron Sears last week, they moved Sears around like he was a defensive lineman just from position to position to match up with uh, some of the defensive fronts of LSU. You don't often see that. Pass is caught by Chris Hannon. Yeah. And guess who tackles him again? Patrick Willis, the junior from Brewston, Tennessee. I want to tell you, Willis is just playing a marvelous football game. And what they're doing is they're giving them the little short pass, letting them, they're taking away the deep one, and when they catch it, they're coming up and hitting them right away. Willis that time had coverage just like a glove. Willis, a uh, running back and linebacker in high school, not highly recruited because he played at a small school, a 1A level, but uh, Ole Miss certainly stuck with him and glad they did. Fair catch called for by Espy. Well, during the first half, we asked this all tell text to win SEC Trivia Challenge. Who holds the SEC record for the highest completion percentage in a game? Well, it's T. Martin, who we had a chance to see yesterday. It was 23 out of 24 at South Carolina on a Jefferson Pilot Sports game. Of course, we reminisced about oh, that. Yeah. Uh, but tune in next week for your chance to play text to win SEC Trivia Challenge presented by all tell There was a flag on that punt, so let's get the call. During the kick, holding number two on the receiving team. That is penalized half the distance to the goal from the end of the kick, first down. Buzz, you saw some of that. What happened? Dave, Ja'Cory Wallace was coming down the far side of the field. He was one of the gunners for Tennessee. And Burnell Wallace gets tangled up with him. He just holds him. There's a fair catch on the other side of the field, totally away from the play, a mistake you can't make. You know, you're going to have the ball close to the 20. Now you're backed up inside the 10. Not a good way to start your first possession of the second half. Toss sweep goes to McSwade and 
much like the first offensive play of the game. It loses a yard, maybe two. Boy, and you see the number of orange shirts that come in there. He's met at the line of scrimmage. Simon miss, uh, gets him, comes up and slaps him. Gaither gets in there on him. I mean, they are just running to the ball. He misses, makes one miss, and there's two and three and four coming. This is where Tennessee puts a lot of pressure on an offense. You don't want to be backed up inside the 10-yard line. Well, part of the problem is they don't allow anybody to rush the football. They're yeah. first in the league. They're fourth nationally, only 73 yards a game. Opponents only average 2.4 yards per carry. Five-man front, a little play action. Spurlock in some trouble. Running, being chased by Simon. Throws it, and it falls incomplete. Looking for Mike Espy. Coverage on the play came from Jonathan Hefty. And what? pressure came from Simon and Gaither. Both those guys flushed Spurlock. They're running about 50 yards. And Dave, I watched Spurlock on that play, and he actually had time to tell his wide receiver, go long, turn around to go long. If he's gonna if he's gonna throw it, he wanted to overthrow it long. Big down here. If you don't get a first down and get out yardage, you've got to give the ball back to Tennessee at midfield. You don't want to do that. Ole Miss two out of seven today on those third down conversions. And the other thing about the first down is Tennessee's now flipped the field. Absolutely. So Ole Miss will have to punt out of their end zone. Four man front. Pressure from the outside. Pass is caught by Espy. Trying to break a tackle. Couldn't do it. And you're not going to break a tackle against Jason Allen. Oh. I want to tell you, Jason Allen plays cornerback. He reminds me so much of Lester Hayes. Great coverage. You see him never in bad position. You don't ever see breaking tackles. Watch this right here. He's going to come off the ball. Look at Jason Allen. When he wraps you up, you are going down. Well, Coach Fulmer said yesterday, it summed it up great about Jason Allen. He makes 98% of the plays he should, and he makes 50 of the 50% of the plays he should. <laughs> that's, <laughs> yeah. that's the kind of player to have. <laughs> High snap. Kick is away by Mosley. Lucas Taylor takes it at the 44-yard line. And nice special oh. teams tackle at the 40-yard line. Brought down by Terrell Jackson, the freshman out of Puckett, Mississippi. 44-yard kick. Loss of three on the return. Back after this. Congratulations. Tennessee 17, Ole Miss 3. Third quarter action in our all-tell SEC game of the week from Knoxville. Rick Lawson back under center. Rick now 10 out of 23 for 134 yards. Trying to open it up here. Has a man just off his fingertips. It was Robert Meacham. Oh, so close. Oh. I think Clawson's reaction showed it all. He had him on a go pattern. He bit. You see, he had a little fake strong, strong side, and he came back and just laid it out about a just about a stride too far out. And Clawson knew it right away. He said, "Gosh, I had him." It'll be interesting, Dave, to see how Tennessee comes out in the second half. You've got you've been exhausted. You're tired from that last game. They came out, played with a lot of emotion. You see that number down yeah. there, Dave? One out of his last nine. Got off to a great start. And has slowed down. Here's Riggs off the right side. Falls over the 45 to the 46-yard line. That'll bring up a third down and about five on the play. Number 38 is Kelvin Robinson. He wears that Chucky Mullins jersey. Watch his play. Step up, read to make the read, play across the face, get to the play. That's exactly how you want to play. You can't go behind that block. He's got six tackles. Unfortunately, he's limping off, Dave. Yeah, he had a team high 10 tackles last week against Wyoming, including an interception. And you mentioned wearing that uh, Chucky Mullins Courage Award, uh, winning that. And the award is to be able to wear Chucky Mullins as number 38. A former safety moved up to linebacker and has made the transition quite nicely, leading the team in tackles. Lawson's pass is complete to Chris Brown, run out of bounds by Gary Pack. Will be a first down after the pickup of nine yards. Boy, don't you notice the? We talk about efficiency with Clawson. I know it almost sounds like we're overusing the word, but for Philip Fulmer, Clawson gets the job done. He throws to his tight end. He finds a big guy coming across. They make first downs. They move the chains. At the 44, Tennessee lines up in an eye on first down and ten. Lawson tripped and dropped at the 49. 
Gary Pack just got his left arm, I believe, out there. Barely got enough of the shoelace, but it was enough. His second sack of the year. Well, this is a crawl sack. Gary Pack, 26. He's crawling in there and just <laughs> reaches out. Great effort. Oh, it was. He's left side here. He's going to come up underneath here, and he's going to just crawl up underneath. Look at him coming through there. He gets down on the ground. He doesn't give up, just reaches up. Some of the great tackles you can make are shoestrings. So a loss of seven on the play. Tennessee will go to a four-wide receiver set on second and 17. Now, in this defense, Ole Miss is elected just to rush the lineman. They haven't brought pressure. It's a four-man front. And that's all they bring. Balls into throw near side. Pass is caught. And still moving is Brett Smith. Dropped at the uh, 45, close to the original line of scrimmage. And Dave, this catch, let him catch it in front, come up and tackle him defense, is, is worked well for Ole Miss. Let's check in with Buzz on Kelvin Robinson. Any news? Just a tweak. Able to go back in here just shortly. Tim Mullins used the magic touch again, and he'll be back out there shortly. <laughs> Tim's got that magic touch. If he's got Kelvin Robinson, or excuse me, uh, Patrick Willis back on the field and Michael Spurlock. That's uh, magic. Yeah, Tim Mullins, the uh, head, head athletic trainer over at uh, Ole Miss. Here comes pressure. Look, at they gave it away, but here they come. Tennessee picks it up nicely. Pass is caught by Hannon. That'll be a first down. Great job by the big orange front five. Charles Clark with the tackle. Absolutely. Ole Miss elected to bring the two backers on, on that blitz. Clawson read it, read it quickly. Watch this. You're going to see him moving around. Look, they're coming here. All of a sudden, he drops back into coverage. Look at Clawson. Just sits back there and just waits and finds Hannon on that little, little open. Reads the blitz. Perfect. And you mentioned those big offensive linemen giving him time. That is perfect zone block. Slide along that line. And Aaron Sears back in that line for Tennessee. Big collision at the 29-yard line. And Riggs keeps his legs moving down to the 25. Patrick Willis was the man who was involved in that collision initially. And Jamie Mitchell finally brought him down. Yeah, Patrick Willis hits him. Oh, listen to that hit. But he just can't wrap him up, Dave, on that play, but big hit. Riggs, 71 yards today. Gerald looking for his eighth career 100-yard game. Busted out for over 100 in the opener against UAB, which was uh, a lot closer football game than many had predicted. Nice play on the inside by Michael Bozeman as he breaks down Gerald Riggs. That time Bozeman able to wrap up. But that will be a Tennessee first down. Yeah, good play by number 72. Bozeman slides the ball well, gets in front. He's got to he's got to play off his block slide to it. But Gerald Riggs, he's got that great leg strength. When he hits, it's almost like he doesn't lock his legs. They just keep on churning and digging. Gerald averaging 95 yards a game, third best in the SEC. And uh, he's averaging four and a half yards per carry. And I was impressed with the fourth quarter in overtime, how fresh he looked and how hard he ran on Monday night. Here he is again. This time a sweep off the right side. He's got some room to the 10. Stumbles forward to the seven-yard line. Brought down by DeMarcus Sanford. First down, Tennessee. A 12-yard gain. Boy, the tight end. Brown gets Jamie Mitchell at the top up there. He's going to lock him in there, and then they're going to get around. And Rob Smith, 52, the big guys out there to leave. Patrick Willis, he comes up there. He tries. See, he just can't play across. Look at him, still working there, and he just can't. See that right arm? He can't get that right arm. Can't use it to push him away. Well, great effort, though. But how about big Rob Smith? We've seen him two or three times leading the play. Snap the ball and still get out and lead the runner. First and goal from the seven. It's Riggs again. Hit and stopped on the spot by Gary Pack, the sophomore out of Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Inside the red zone this year. Tennessee has uh, been pretty good this season. 15 possessions, nine touchdowns. Trying to add to that total right now as they sit at the seven yard line on second and goal. That's a look at the red zone powered by Honda generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. Blue 
Lucas Taylor, the true freshman, tried to catch the outside, couldn't do it. Kelvin Robinson, who's back on the field with a nice play defensively, and that'll bring up a third down. This is an interesting play. What he does is he comes all the way along the line of scrimmage. You see everybody running. You see there, you see Willis running to the football. But what he does is he actually runs from a flanker spot in motion. And as, as Clawson looks at it, he snaps the ball. When he's right there behind him, just hands him the ball, and he's on a dead run going around the outside. An 11-play drive that's chewed up almost six minutes. But it's third down and goal from the six. Arian Foster now in the game at tailback. Now do you bring pressure? Pass is tipped at the line of scrimmage. It falls incomplete. Jamie Mitchell again. You got to be kidding me. If that was Jamie Mitchell, you called it, Dave. And I saw him in there, number 77. See if he gets the hand up. There he is right there. Yes. Jamie Mitchell has two passes uh, broken up so far today. He has a blocked field goal, a quarterback pressure, a couple of tackles. I mean, this guy has done it from his end position. That'll bring up a fourth down. So Will Hoyt will come in. The ball will be placed at the 13-yard line, so a 23-yard field goal for Mr. Will Hoyt, who has missed from 44, made from 25. From the right hash. And the kick is good. Not a bad drive for Philip Fulmer's Tennessee Volunteers. They ate up a lot of the clock. 5.32 left to go in the third quarter. Their lead is now 17 over Ole Miss. SEC football is brought to you in part by Toyota. Well, Dave, we're at 5.32 to go in the third quarter, and that was a six-minute drive by Tennessee. Is that uh, one of those deflating drives if you're Ole Miss defense? It is if they get nothing on this next series. They can they can withstand that kind of a drive, but they have to get they have to move to change and get something positive on this drive, or else you're right. It's going to take all the wind out of their sails. Will Hoyt to kick it off. And Tay Biddle will, wow. instead of taking the knee, Catching it, taking a knee like he's done four times already today. He decides to, you know what? Forget this. <laughs> so, well, next week we are heading down to Gainesville, Florida. Can't wait to see the Gators and their fans. Always one of the great places to watch college football as they will host Mississippi State in a rematch of last year's Bulldog victory over the Gators. And log on to jpsports.com and click on the Regents Bank Road Trip Planner for the quickest routes and all the information you need traveling around the SEC. Can't wait to get down to oh, Gainesville. Boy. The swamp. Yeah, the swamp. Boy, I'll tell you, trying to make audibles in that end zone, you don't do that. Those fans are, those are tremendous fans. Gators take on Alabama a little bit later this afternoon. Spurlock, quick pass on the near side, red and covered by Jason Allen, like Jason knew the route was coming. <laughs> caught, pass caught by uh, Mike Espy. Boy, number 18, I love his play. I just love a cornerback. He's got great confidence. He plays out there. He can play up in the face. And I walked with through him uh, when we did that first game, Dave. And he says, I put my hands on him. He said, I ride him. I mean, he does everything just like a professional player would do. That was his 29th tackle this year. At 123 last year, which was tops in the SEC. Here's Spurlock in the pocket over the middle and Biddle didn't look but a flag comes down and Jason Allen on the coverage can't believe it. But he was shoulder to shoulder with Tay Biddle. I'll be anxious to see the replay. Look at John Chavis. He's upset too. He's saying hey wait a minute. We got a great rush. We had great coverage. He didn't like it. It, from our angle, it looked like, from where I am, of course, I'm about 200 yards away, it looked like it was a little bit of a hold. Well, maybe when he breaks inside. The pass was thrown, holding number 18 on the defense, 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. All right, Spurlock under a lot of pressure. Watch this. He's got to get back there. He's got the big guys coming in his face, and you see him quick arm it. Now, look, oh, yeah, see, when he gets back, that's the arm I'm saying. Yeah, that's holding. When you get four or five yards off that line, you just can't interfere with them coming downfield. So I think you just held on a little bit longer. Yeah. I think what John Javis is saying about that call is that happens on a regular basis. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, it's not blatant. Let's just say that. It's part of the play. But Jason Allen is so good at getting in front of him. 
Now, big down here. Got to start this new series. Keep the chains moving. First and ten. Pass is high. And then Espy is hit from behind by Kevin Simon as it falls incomplete. That'll bring up second down and ten. Boy, on that play, I wondered what Jonathan Wade re read, Dave. He came across on just a dart coming across over there. I thought he was going to intercept the football. Boy, Kevin Simon, he levels him. Watch this, Kevin Simon. Boom. Hello. You don't come into my zone. Boy, they miss Mario Hill. This is, yeah. this is apparently a two, actually three if you throw in Larry Kendrick, but, I mean, that's it. It's Kendrick, yeah. uh, Biddle, and Espy. I mean, that's the three guys they have to throw to today. Not much, if any, tied end activity. And Spurlock rolls right this time, trying to find Jamal Pittman. It falls incomplete. Boy, and I wonder if Espy would go, I mean, if they would go back to Espy. That time I saw Espy on a crossing pattern at about 16, 18 yards. And boy, they had a shot to hit him. Third down conversions, Dave. Not good for Ole Miss. They have got to convert. You want to be in that 50% range so that you can move those chains. Get your uh, get your rest off your defense. Get your defense off the field. Got to convert this one right here. The third down and 10. Here comes some pressure. Allen on the blitz. Spurlock finds Espy at the 40 to the 43, and that'll be good enough for a first down. They saw where the blitz was coming from or anticipated it. Allen came. Espy sprang free in that zone, and they hit him. Absolutely. Allen is the cornerback, and he's coming all the way from the outside and leaving it uncovered. And you can see number two, that's uh, Simon. He's got to make that coverage, and Espy does a great job. You see how he saw the flag? But again, there's the pressure coming. He just dumps it over top of his head, and Espy comes out of the backfield, picks up huge yardage, gets a first down, moves the chains. Six receptions for 56 yards. Handoff goes to McSwain. Not much happening. Back to the line of scrimmage. I think I said Kevin Burnett earlier. See, I can't get him out of my <laughs> yeah. mind. It's Kevin Simon. Yeah. A couple of Kevins that have, uh, uh, you know, were as close as two linebackers yes. or two players can be. Those two guys uh, went through the battles and the wars of SEC football together and. Uh, Burnett has moved on while Mr. Simon has stayed to wrap things up a little bit. And I believe Mr. Simon may get a chance to see him <laughs> again. Right. I love to play with Kevin Simon. He plays football like it's supposed to be played. McSwain stopped again at the line of scrimmage. Excuse me, Turner hit at the middle four. That front four for Tennessee. We, we talked about it in the open, about as good and as dominant as you will find in college football. And, you know, what... Uh, John Chavis told us in our meeting was that what that front four does is it allows him to blitz when he wants to, not when they have to. Exactly. There's their they get great penetration. They stuff the line of scrimmage. You see him just come off the ball, get great penetration. They don't miss tackles. Look at the swarm of them. There's just a swarm. I love the way they play. They play football the way it's supposed to be. Jonathan Wade breaks up the pass. It falls incomplete. All right, this is good position by Jonathan Wade, number four. He's got inside position. He does, he's going for the football. All the way, he's going for the football. When Spurlock tries to force it in there, Wade just steps in front of him. He doesn't interfere with the receiver, he just steps inside. Wade already with a 19-yard interception return for a touchdown today. Lucas Taylor stands at the 15. Will Mosley the punt. It's a nice high kick. Good coverage kick. Fair catch called for at the 12-yard line. Good kick by Will Mosley. No flags on the play, so Tennessee will start from there. It is 20 to 3 in Knoxville. Back after a word from your local station. substitute. Harper Porsche, where the drive is always world class. 
Frontier TV Sports Director Rick Russo. Join me after the Florida-Alabama game for your I'm All Ball postgame report from right here at Neyland Stadium. We'll have complete reaction from today's game between the Vols and Rebels. We'll have postgame stats, expert analysis, and even interviews from the locker room with Coach Fulmer and his players. After all, we're covering the uh, volunteers like no other. Jefferson Pilot Sports, CBS, and your local home for Tennessee football, WVLT Volunteer TV. Riggs a tailback. He gets the handoff. Picks up three, maybe four on the play. Dave, brought, I, brought down by once again Patrick Willis now with his 11th tackle of the day. That's amazing. The purple line sit about the 23 yard line, and that first and 10 line is presented by Nexium, the purple pill. Thus, the purple line. You see how we uh, we go out? Yeah. <laughs> we challenge ourselves. <laughs> I'm glad you were reading that script. <laughs> it is second down and eight. Comes another audible by uh, Clawson. Here comes another run off the left side by Riggs, and he is close to the purple pill line. But a flag is down in the secondary of Ole Miss. That should be good enough for a first down, I believe, where they spot the ball. It will be very close. Ed Ogeron looking intently at that flag. Yeah, it's thrown way away from the play. And a personal foul yeah. against Ole uh, Miss. Yeah, that's a, one of those cornerbacks or safeties getting in, getting with a wide receiver. It's away from the play. Ball, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number nine, defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. That's Travis Johnson, the senior out of Shannon, Mississippi. Yeah, had no bearing on the play. But you know what I was going to say? This is a situation where I think you really enjoy watching Rick Clawson. He doesn't make mistakes. He does not force the ball in there. He picks them apart, just keeps on running that offense. I'd be real surprised if he makes a mistake in this situation. Riggs. Cuts it back inside to the 42-yard line. Corvelli Haynes led the charge defensively for the Rebels. A gain of four on the play to bring up second down and six. Riggs, by the way, now closing in on 100 yards. When I watched Riggs that time, he just ran right behind those two big offensive linemen. You? Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, he had Rob Smith, 52, out in front of him. Just said, oh, man, I'm just going to run behind them until they get to the corner. There you go, 21 for a... 103 yards, averaging almost five yards a carry. Another solid, solid afternoon for that young man, the senior out of Chattanooga. Foster in the game for Riggs. A little play action by Clawson. He sold it well, and the result is a catch by Meacham to the 45, 46-yard line of Ole Miss. That's a first down. Boy, he sold it so well that I bid on it, watched the running back go to the, go to the wide side. Great fake here, just comes off the ball. Now he's got that run pass option, short or long, finds Meacham in, in between. Meacham picks up positive yard. That's what I'm talking about when I say he just runs the offense. He's under control. You see Meacham's numbers this year. It uh, probably ought to put a period on the C.J. Fate story. He started the, the game today and uh, hobbled off early in the game and hasn't we haven't seen him since and we get word that he does have a bad ankle and the coaches are just keeping him out for precautionary reasons right now. Pass caught by Meacham to the 40 yard line a gain of five. Charles Clark with his fifth tackle today. And that time Dave again Clawson sitting back there he reads the corner blitz. He knows that Meacham's going to be open on that on that side because the corners coming that way just dumps the ball right over top of his head. Clawson reading this defense very well. Old Miss doing a good job trying to mix it up. Well, as the clock goes under 10 seconds, I think Rick Clawson will just let it run out, and that will be the end of the third quarter. Only three points put up on the board, but they were by the Tennessee Volunteers on a 23-yard James Wilhoyt field goal. So three quarters are in the books as Tennessee and Ole Miss in an SEC battle. It's the Vols by 17. Fourth quarter football is on the way. Tennessee 20 Ole Miss 3. 
as we move to the fourth quarter on an absolutely gorgeous afternoon. The 62nd meeting between these two clubs. Last year, Tennessee won in Oxford 21 to 17 as Philip Fulmer beat his close friend David Cutler. Lawson just throws it away out of bounds. That'll stop the clock on the opening play. Michael Bozeman put the pet pressure on. Take a look at our McDonald's third quarter statistics and <laughs> well Tennessee came in giving up 73 yards a game on the ground that number will go down today wow. and you look at the time of possession still dominated by Tennessee especially after that six minute drive that uh, resulted in a field goal and having Gerald Riggs go for 102 yards on the day also helps that cause and Tave, Tennessee get ready to run their 22nd play this half wow. Ole Miss only has 12. is complete about two yards shy of the first down it went to David Holbert the backup <laughs> fullback McBride made the tackle so on fourth down and one I was hearing all the fans going go for it Randy Sanders may be going for it well this is the kind of drive where you can almost close the book yes. on this game absolutely and you know what you got a Gerald Riggs back there you got an Anderson leading them you got a big offensive line They've controlled the line of scrimmage, done a good job. Why not? Now, if you're old Miss, can you stand up one time? Everybody up. We've got ten guys in the box. Dave, look at this. That oh. hand goes to Arian Foster, and I don't think he made it. No way. Jamarcus Sanford, along with Travis Johnson, out of that secondary, read the play as Foster tried to bust it to the outside. Dave, they had 11 guys in the box. Look at that penetration. Look at him over top. And Sanford comes from the right side. Look at the number of people. There's 11 guys in your screen. Look at him flying over there. He didn't make the purple line. You got to reach the purple line. He didn't get that memo. <laughs> but uh, that's a great defensive stand now. And, uh, you know, with 14 minutes to go in this ball game, you're a big player two away from, you know, having yourself a ball game. And you know Philip Fulmer is fully aware of that after what happened five days ago. Absolutely. I don't know if you can break one or two here, get a good play, get good field position, get back in this football game. But how about that defense stepping up? Nice job by the Rebels. Those fans in Ole Miss, they're going to be proud of their defense. Boy, an awkward looking reverse. That's going to lose three yards, but could have lost 30 the way it started. Oh. Tay Biddle on the reverse. Bumped out of bounds by Jonathan Hefney. Well, what happened is they got some great pressure. Look at that. Up in the ball. Oh, again, we got pushed so deep. You see Harrelson in there. He's 10 yards deep making the tackle. That's Jason Allen. Yep. On that stop, I gave uh, Hefney the credit. Give Jason Allen a little bit of love. So here's second down and 14 now. Got to go downfield. Got to find one of those wide outs in those one on one position. Got to call in that offensive line to give you a little time. Yeah. Oh. Kendrick drops the pass. Oh. Probably the best thrown ball all day by Spurlock. And you can see a little disgusting look on Michael Spurlock's uh, face. He threw that ball just perfect to Kendrick. Kendrick's doing about a 16, 18 yard drag out. In other words, you go deep and come underneath, and what you, he just throws it, it hits him right in the hands. Look at this. That's a well thrown ball. You got to catch that. Got to catch that. Can't afford that 17 down in the fourth quarter, that's for sure. You know what I'd do? Probably go right back to him. If he's out there, I'd say make up for it. Well, Kendrick, Espy, and Biddle line up on the right side of. Spurlock is in the shotgun. And Spurlock runs right into the pressure. Now he's got all day to throw. Stops and fires. Passes caught oh. by Espy first down. And Jonathan Hefney missed Espy and hit Jason Allen at full throttle. His own teammate. Wow, you talk about a collision. How about Espy going up for that ball? Number 11. Now watch Spurlock. He's trying to get outside. He can't. So now he comes along. Look at him directing his receiver. Right there. Go down. And then he just throws a perfect strike. And watch Espy go up for this ball. 
coming off the ball. He's just trying to get clear. When your quarterback's in trouble, you just try to open up. And look at that hit. He was out of bounds. Now he comes back in bounds, but what a great concentration. That should have been an incomplete pass. Biddle up in the air, batted away at the last moment by Hefty. Nearly mistimed it. But what a great oh. athletic play. You know, and Hefney's just a sophomore. He's playing back there. They've had a lot of changes in that secondary. They've not been, really been comfortable. But Hefney makes a senior play. Watch number 33 go up and get this ball. High. As you said, it almost jumped a little bit early, Dave. Second down and 10 is Ed Ogeron's defense. Came up with a big stand to give his offense an opportunity. Got single coverage at the bottom. Oh, snap that ball when they jump off sides. And the flag comes down late, and what a catch from Tate Biddle. That'll be a first down if it holds. Well, if you're a center, when they jump into that neutral zone and you're doing a hard count, you have got to snap that ball. It's a free five yards, at least. Offside on the defense, white defensive end. That penalty's declined. Result of the play, first half. 13 yard pickup. Hard count. Look at this, just lays it out. Watch Biddle go out there, one hand. That's great concentration. Again, look at him, he's one on one. Man, that is effort. You talk about Coach O for the, for the old Miss Rebels wanting the effort. That's effort when you see him do that, Dave. First and 10. Good looking drive by uh, the Rebels. Inside handoff goes to McSwain. Down to the 26 yard line. Gain of five on the play. And a flag is down. Well, the announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. And a face mask against Tennessee. Philip Fulmer's club ranks seventh in the league in penalties, about 57 yards per game. Ole Miss on the other side of that coin, 50 yards Personal per foul. game, fourth fewest. Face mask, number 94 in the defense. Half the distance to the goal from the end of the run, first half. Just the third penalty of the day against Philip Fulmer's club, and John Chavis, the defensive coordinator, knows that his club needs to stop now as the ball is moved inside the 15 down to the 13-yard line. I think you're going to hear the Rocky Top crowd get into this one. McSwain looking to throw it. Popped out of bounds by Xavier Mitchell and Omar Gaither. I almost was screaming. I was thinking to myself, throw it. Just throw it. Is SB open? He's on a, He's going to sneak out the corner. Oh, is he open? Look at him. Oh, mercy. They cover him late. But on that play, you the one thing that you don't want to do is take a six, seven, eight, nine yard loss. You got to throw it. Well, he's a running back, Dave. Well, by, I know. By, by, by trade. You're exactly right. He's a red shirt <laughs> freshman. Ouch. 11.55. To go in the ball game. Here's Espy. He's looking at a lot of orange. Picks up some of that yardage lost on the last play down to the 17 yard line. Jason Mitchell and Kevin Simon meet him. Go inside that red zone again. You see the Ole Miss story defensively. They've only given up one touchdown. Or excuse me, their offense. They've only scored one touchdown, seven opportunities. They, as a team, are 42.9%. That is dead last in the SEC. They're two out of four in the field goal department in the red zone this year. Coming into today, and right now, they would love to improve those numbers. And that red zone look is powered by Honda Generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. Well, you don't want a field goal in this situation. Over the middle, pass is caught at the three by Biddle. He falls forward to the two. It's first and goal. Ole Miss. Oh, I love to see Spurlock. Did you see him sit in that pocket 
He looked downfield, looked downfield. Receivers are going downfield. They're just gonna curl. Now, just come right in that little zone right there, and Spurlock just stays in that pocket. He got a little bit of happy feet there at the tail end, but he stayed in there, planted, and delivered a strike. That's the way you play it. Stay in that pocket if you have to. They want a big third down. They pick up the 14 yards, enough for the first down. Tay Biddle now, 52 yards on four receptions. It's first and goal from the two. Let me tell you, against Tennessee, this is not a gimme. Play action. Looking to the fullback, nearly picked off. Omar Gaither was right there. He had his wide receiver so open. That is unbelievable. I mean, watch this. Watch Gaither go up for it. But he had Cook. Look at Cook standing there, just say, throw the ball up. But Omar Gaither goes up high. Wow. And look at Spurlock. You think he doesn't know it? Just loft it up. All you had to do is just loft it over his head. It was touchdown. We were here for the UAB game when Justin Harrell picked up an interception on about the same looking play. Here's the pitch to McSwain. He's got great speed to the corner. Touchdown, Rebels. Oh, a big time drive by Ole Miss in the fourth quarter. Well, you called it, but Swain's speed is what made that because he had Reynolds running right with him, number 89 running right with him. But look at McSwain. Just turn it on, sees that corner. Let's check in with Dave Baker. Hey, Dave, deception as well. They saw the big thing on, uh, on Spurlock's left hand. Nobody thought that they could run an option left, but they did it, and he pitched with a right hand. Great <laughs> deception. Point after is up and good by Robert Bass, and it's a 10-point game here in Knoxville, 20 to 10. The Volunteers lead. Miko McSwain, the freshman out of Rickton, Mississippi, with 4-3 speed, needed every bit of it. SEC football is brought to you in part by Acura. All right, we got ourselves a ball game, 20 to 10 in the fourth quarter here at Neyland Stadium, 10-18 to go. Lucas Taylor lets it bounce into and through the end zone. So Tennessee will take it over, take over at the 20. And let's go back to that touchdown, Dave. And that pitch is just uh, something we did not expect. Really interesting. He's going to come out here and fake to uh, Cook, his fullback, going up through the line. Then he's going to talk, toss the ball out to his left with his right hand because he's face back. There's the fakes. The fullback tosses it out. Now look at the help. Look at the help he's got coming. He's got the troops coming from there, 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 but he's going to beat them to the corner. Look at that speed you talked about. What was that, 4-2-3 speed? 4-2-9. He's been clocked at in the 40, and he needed, needed every inch of that to get to that corner. Absolutely. Got a lot of troops coming. Here's Riggs. He's adding to his 100-yard day. He picks up seven on the carry. Knocked out of bounds, however, so that'll stop the clock at the 28-yard line. That last drive by Ole Miss, one of the best drives they've had all year that has resulted in a touchdown. 11 plays, 64 yards, three minutes and 43 seconds. And that successful drive means another $500 to the SEC's education initiative, courtesy of Safe Auto Insurance Company. Call 1-800-SAFE-AUTO, and you, too, can be a successful driver so on second down and three and a lot of times this is a waste down but I think if you're Tennessee you just try to get the first down keep the clock going Riggs breaks some tackles out to the 40 and drops at the 41 yard line finally McKinley Boykin brings him down and the missed tackles, Dave, are starting to add up for Ole Miss. They are. They had him in the backfield, Dave. They had him back there. Right in here, you're going to see penetration right there. You've got to make that tackle. You've got him two yards in the backfield. That's Truman McBride, number three. Sanford, he's another one. And if you're, uh, if you're Coach O, you're upset. Well, he talked, Dave, week one. He said his team tackled as well as any team he's coached before. But for whatever reason, the last two weeks, they've lost that focus in terms of tackling on a consistent basis. High snap. Lawson had Brett Smith wide open, didn't throw it, and then waited too long, and it falls incomplete. Josh Briscoe was the intended target. Johnson on the coverage. So it's 
second down and 10, and the clock stops on the incomplete pass. Now, if you're on the Ole Miss side, you're thinking, got to have a turnover, force a fumble, make Clawson make a mistake. If you're on the Tennessee side, you're thinking, just keep on running the ball, get those positive yards. Flag comes in right in that spot where there might be a holding call. You know, I thought Brett Smith might have tackled on that play. Brett Smith's the wide receiver, and I saw him turn back, and it, I forgot, I didn't see who the number was. It might have been Gary Pack. Chop block back in there. That was Gary, that was uh, Brett Smith, number nine. You see him tapping that shirt. You know, it stops the clock. Well, actually, the clock is running. Somebody's going to have to uh, put a stop on the clock. It's at 9.04. They just lost some seconds. Early run, illegal block below the waist. Number nine on the offense. 15 yard penalty, second down. Well, I wonder if anybody caught the fact that some seconds came off that clock. A lot of seconds came off that clock. There was that cut block, but you could barely see it on the left part of your screen where number nine, Brett Smith, came in and did that chop block. But you're right, Dave. I looked up when you said that, and that clock was going down. Well, they just made the announcement they're going to reset the clock, I believe, to nine minutes and 15 seconds. 9.16. Reset the clock to nine minutes, 16 seconds. That's 12 seconds difference. You're right. Good job by a crew right on top of it. And for Ole Miss and that man right there, every second is important. So it's second down and 25. Now, can you get pressure on Clawson? Can you throw, make him throw short, come up and tackle him, bring up that third down? Four-man rush. Clawson steps up, fires. Incomplete, here comes a flag. Oh, Travis Johnson covering the freshman Lucas Taylor. Boy, and Travis Johnson had good position on him. I just think he just interfered with him. The official in great position to make that call. Right in front of the old Miss bench. Yeah, we don't have a real good look at it, but uh, he definitely got tangled up on that play. And that is uh, on a second down and 25, Dave. Yeah. Pass interference, number nine on the defense. 15 yards, automatic first down. LSU in the second quarter at Mississippi State. Uh, they gave up an opening touchdown to Mississippi State, and the Tigers have rattled off 17 straight in that one. See Virginia Tech all over West Virginia and Michigan and Michigan State. Boy, what has happened to the Wolverines? I know my old man's probably a little chapped at that, but hey, <laughs> sorry, big fella. You went to the wrong school, I guess. <laughs> and a handoff. Gets about a yard to Corey Anderson, the fullback. You know, it's a, my, my one chance to get my day. He talks about <laughs> Michigan all the time. Michigan, Michigan, Michigan. I got to be able to get him back every now and then. Well, some people might not know who your dad is. Your dad, one of the great broadcasters Thank you. in college football history here in the SEC, broadcast for what, about seven, eight, nine yeah, years? A lot of these games went up here in Knoxville. Oh, By the yeah. way, we haven't had a chance to talk about Penn State any oh, this year. Hey, how about those Nittany Lions? <laughs> Joe Pa, 4-0. Your, your old club. <laughs> no, he shouldn't retire. He's only 90. <laughs> Play clock down to one. They get the snap off. Handoff goes to Ontario Hardesty. That gets nothing, and that'll bring up another long third down. And Hardesty is in pain. The players immediately signal for the trainers to come on the field. And I don't Mitchell and Willis converged on that tackle for Ole Miss. And just when the coaches thought they had a, a healthy Montario Hardesty, See if maybe his if his, see if his right leg doesn't get bent back. That's what I thought I saw right in here. Oh yeah, he's got somebody tackled on the back of his leg. We can see it get it from this angle. Good break of the tackle there, but you see the way that leg gets bent underneath. Mm. Trainers looking at that right leg. We'll update the situation when we come back. Medical staff 
Taking a look at Monterio Hardesty, that right knee. The freshman from New Bern, North Carolina. We'll update that as soon as we get some more. Lawson on the run, fires, passes, caught at the 43-yard line by Jason Swain. That's a first down into Ole Miss territory, a 15-yard, give him 16 yards on the pickup. Well, and Rick Cloth from that time, rolling to his left, squares up them shoulders, look at this strike, waits for the break, delivers just a strike right to him. Good square up right here, not getting a lot of pressure. Just look at that, just excellent form, just throws a strike to him. And Dave, what a blow, third yeah. down and long. Oh, I know, that's exactly what was in. How much did he make it by, three or four yeah. yards extra? So first and 10, Tennessee will hand it to Riggs. Riggs trying to get to the outside, gets nothing on the carry. Robinson chases him down. And this is where I begin to wonder about that Monday game that yeah. this club gets back into town at 4 a.m. You know, are their legs as good as they were in Baton Rouge in the fourth quarter? Because they look like they were, they look fresher, as fresh as they did in the first quarter. As you look at the first and 10 line presented by Nexium, the purple pill. Well, you know, what a lot of people don't realize, it takes three or four days to rehydrate yourself, get that fluid back into your system. Those guys were exhausted. I, have to, I talked to Bob Kessling, their radio guy, and he said that they literally had to lift them up and put them in seats <laughs> to do interviews after the game. And Riggs gets knocked out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. Or are they going to say he was... They're going to say rule he was in bounds. They're keeping the clock moving. Oh. Oh. And the official wound the clock and said, keep it going. We'll see it in the upper left-hand corner there. That'll bring up a third down and seven. Well, I'll tell you, these coaches, Dave, they prepared for this game before the LSU game. They broke down film before they left for uh, on Saturday and Sunday before they left for LSU. So they were prepared. The players, of course, got the game plan, couldn't do it until they got back on Tuesday. But, uh, heads up play by Philip Fulmer and his staff to get ready for this game. Timeout taken by Tennessee. They look at a third down and seven. We'll see what the outcome will be when we return. Dave Baker back here on the sidelines at Neyland Stadium. Ontario Hardesty, the freshman running back with so much promise. Philip Fulmer called him a very prideful guy. You see him just going to the locker room right now. Knee ligament problem with the right knee will not be back today. Doesn't sound good initially, but Dr. Bill Yeomans is gonna go in and give him a look, Dave. All right, Buzz, thank you very much. Passes caught on the near side by uh, Brett Smith. That'll be a yard or two shy of the first down, so that'll bring up a fourth down. And fourth and, uh, say, fourth and a long one, Dave. What do you do? Well, I think I think you go for it again. They went for it last time. Why not go for it again? You see the rushing card story today. Minus 11, all told, for the Rebels. 140 for Tennessee, a pretty good number for the Vols. And Dave, in that defense, Ole Miss put 10 guys, or 11 guys in the box. Now, they split one person out, they got everybody up front, fourth down. They stopped them last time. Foster breaks a tackle, breaks two tackles, and then falls inside the 30. Down to the 28, Robert, Ru or excuse me, Patrick Willis makes the stop. That'll be his 13th tackle today. But it's too late as Tennessee picks up the first down. Watch Foster give that little limp leg right here. Look at that little limp leg. See if they kind of drag that leg behind him. He saw the he saw the tackler coming up, Willis coming up for it. And he just kind of gave him a soft leg. You look at the Tennessee rushing department this year, Dave. 91 yards per game. That is 11th in the league, and that is the third fewest in the history of this school on a season average. Now a long way to go, and today they have now racked up on the ground. Up over 145 yards. That was Arian Foster brought down by who else? Patrick Willis. Sure. If I could give a player the game, UK. Patrick Willis is my MVP today. Absolutely. Bad knee, broken One. hand, hasn't practiced in two weeks, and he has 14 stops today and hasn't come off the field defensively. No. You lead by example, and I'll tell you this this team stood up when he got in that football game. He just got out there and he said, I'm just going to play through the pain. 
The doctor, he told the doctor, he said, is it supposed to hurt? The doc said, yeah. He said, well, then I'm going to play. <laughs> that was easy and I mean, I heard that as a comment from a good source. Foster falls forward to the 23-yard line. Well, this fall, watch for the Geico College Football Campus Tour, a season-long traveling exhibit celebrating the 10 greatest quarterbacks of all time. Go to jpsports.com for more information and to find out when Geico will be visiting a college campus near you. Timeout on the field with 4.39 to play, Tennessee by 10. Well, this drive by Tennessee is reaching its 14th, 14th play. It has already taken over five minutes off the clock. We have 4.39 to go in the game. Ole Miss down by 10. Third down and five. Hand off to Foster. Falls forward to the 21. He'll be two yards shy of the first down. And Here comes another one of those fourth down plays, Dave. Timeout, Ole Miss. That'll leave them with just one. And with that timeout, we will return after these messages from the University of Mississippi and the University of Tennessee. There's a man who spent a good part of his morning getting ready for today's game. As Tennessee leads it by 10. Dave, we're looking at a fourth down and two. What do you do? I think you go for it, Dave. It's a two-possession game. Even if you kick the field goal, it's still two possessions. I don't want to I wouldn't want to risk the block the return that turns the whole thing around so I think Phil Fulmer Randy Sanders and their staff they're smart to go for it in this situation they are one out of two on fourth down conversions today little play action Rick Lawson sells it dives Ooh, close Wow close Kelvin Robinson. Oh. And the fan boos. Uh, the fans are booing because of the spot of the ball. Fake here. He comes out naked. Heads up play to run. He dives forward. And Boykin gets him, but uh, he had to make about the 19 yard line. Let's see where he comes down. Watch where the ball comes. See the purple line? Oh, knee the down, knee's down. Yeah. And the ball is short of the purple line. I don't think you I don't think he made it. Well, if they if they mark it where his knee went down. They did. I'll tell you what. The Ole Miss defense has had their backs against the wall all day today, Dave, and they have stood tall most of the time. Absolutely. And I think what you need, what they need to do at Ole Miss is give their coach a chance. Just give them a chance. Let them recruit some players. Hey, and defensively, they've only given up one touchdown today. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. An interception that was returned. Just give the coach some chance. He's got to recruit players. He's got to turn this program to his liking, run his offense, his defense. Well, on the flip side of that, Tennessee's defense has been more than outstanding. Loose football. It's on the ground, and Tennessee has it. Antoine Stewart with the fumble recovery. Gaither forced the fumble. And you can put this one in the books as Tennessee leads by 10, and they have the football at the Ole Miss 13-yard line. See if that if he's carrying the ball in that left hand or right. Oh, he carries it in the right and he just carried it like a, a loaf of bread and he just got stripped. And that was Gaither in there again. How about Gaither today? Two quarterback pressures, a broken up pass, a sack he's in on seven tackles and a forced fumble. You Pretty good day today. That's a great day. You know, that's just a chance you take when you put a quarterback out there that has a broken finger and has a wrap on it that, the, you know, Ball control is is going to be an issue. Now you've got four minutes left. What do you do if you're Philip Fulmer? This old Miss team has played their hearts out, but you know what? There's four minutes left, and you keep on playing. But I think I see a flag down, Dave. I think that's a 12 uh, substitution violation. 12 men broke the huddle, perhaps. Substitution infraction on the offense. 12 men in the formation. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Update our Hummer scoreboard and show you that LSU and Mississippi State in the second. Tigers by 10. Virginia Tech all over their rivals, West Virginia, and now they're going wow. to overtime. Michigan State and Michigan. And Wisconsin puts it on Indiana. 
If I'm not mistaken, Indiana's first loss this year, yes. if I'm not mistaken. I think you're right. Boston College all over Ball State. Here's Clawson. Here's Arian Foster. He falls forward to the 15-yard line. Haven't seen much of Gerald Riggs here in the last couple of drives. I guess Gerald goes in uh, 26 carries, 125 yards. That young man might just be worn out. I think he's earned his due. Yeah. I think I'd bring him over, too. And Ole Miss will take their final timeout of the game. Hungry for a big win? Enter at MillionNuggets.com for a chance to win one of over 15,000 Chick-fil-A small nugget trays and a chance at one of 13 grand prize trips to the 2005 SEC Championship game where you will compete for a chance to throw for $1 million. The first 300,000 to register get a coupon for a free Dr. Pepper. You can register at MillionNuggets.com before October 29th. Dave, I you look at the big picture of this game for Tennessee. Obviously, the win at Baton Rouge Monday night got them back in the race. Just when yeah. you thought maybe that they were out of this thing, they are now fully back in it. They have five days off. I don't think there was any kind of number that Tennessee, that Phil Fulmer wanted to see out of this club other than get the W every yeah. day. Absolutely. He knew his players were tired. And you know what's next, too. Oh, yes. Do we ever know what's next? Georgia, then Alabama. They have a week off after the Georgia game. So all things considered, I think Philip Fulmer will be more than happy to get out of here with this win, get his team their normal routine back. Foster to the 10. Down to the seven yard line. Uh, second and 13, he'll bring up uh, third and five. Well, this is just good heads up run skip. I love the way they skip run through there. Just kind of dance, quick feet, get them down, plant them quick, find that little seam. And I'll tell you this, we always talk about Tennessee loading up on those big defensive linemen. They load up on running backs too. You look at the history of this school with running backs. You can throw the D lineman in that group yeah. now. Oh, exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Noel Mazzoni said, golly, every year. He said, I started, they had a guy named Little. <laughs> then they come up with this guy. Foster can't break the tackle of Patrick Willis, who now has 15 stops. And I wonder, I wonder how many he would have had if he had had two arms in this game. This has been a real time of possession type of game. And, Buzz, you got more on that? Dave, 12 minutes is almost the advantage for Tennessee on this. They've had the ball now 81 plays compared to 53 for Ole Miss. And when we were talking to Randy Sanders yesterday, he said that they had 90-plus plays that they graded on the film. Now, there weren't that many offensive snaps because of penalties and things, but that's 170 plays for these 300-pound offensive linemen. They are really gutting it out right now. Wyoming held the ball uh, 37 minutes against Ole Miss last week. Here's Foster. He's met at the line of scrimmage. Falls forward to the one. And Dave, what about Old Miss? I mean, they're not quitting in there. They're down on the two-yard line. I mean, they still got the big boys in there. I see Rob Smith still still in there at center. Tawina, number 72, still in there. Look at Coach Ogeron. He's still in there. <laughs> Boy, is he ever. He's about he's out on that field. Don't quit. That's what he's saying. Don't quit. Give it everything you have. Clock. Moving at 2-11, 2-10. And off goes to Foster again. Touchdown, Tennessee. Arian Foster, the freshman out of San Diego, California, with his first touchdown of his career. Well, and Ole Miss did not quit. They got to the line of scrimmage. It was tough yard. Big guys in there. I mean, I just watched Sears come off the ball that time. Top of your screen. Look at Sears come off that ball. Pushing him back. Big number 76. Tennessee! Yeah, baby, yeah! Will Hoyt in to attempt the point after. It is up and it is good. So the lead now at 17 points as Tennessee 
is looking to win their 43rd game in this series. As Ole Miss makes their first trip to Knoxville since 1997 when Tennessee won that game 31 to 17. Well, it's time to register for the Bell South Kick for a Million contest. This year, the prize is bigger. One lucky fan will have the chance to win $1 million and an extreme bundle from Bell South. For your chance to win, log on to bellsouthsports.com. Be sure and join us on Saturday, 1230 Eastern, 1130 Central, as Mississippi State rolls into the swamp to battle the Florida Gators. Now, last year, if you'll recall, the Bulldogs beat the Gators in one of the biggest upsets of the year. Jarius Norwood ran for 174 yards and is hoping for another big upset. But Florida has different plans. The Gators are hungry. They're looking at an SEC championship and are making some noise in Urban Meyer's first season. They're looking also for payback behind their quarterback, Chris Leak. It'll be a great rematch that you don't want to miss. 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central. That was some game last oh, year. Oh, gosh. That was uh, Sylvester Croom's biggest win, obviously. But you kept thinking, I, kept, I go back and look at that game, and you kept waiting for the roof to cave in on the Bulldogs, and it never did. No, they just stayed in that game. And coaches will tell you, if we can just stay in it, stay in it, stay in it, who knows what may happen at the end. And last year, Mississippi State won that game at the end. Kickoff will come down to Tay Biddle. Tay being chased and dragged down at the eight yard line. A flag also comes in around the 25 with 155 to go. I'll be interested to hear the comments from uh, both of these coaches from different points of view. Ed, Ed Orgeron trying not to lose this club. Obviously losing back to back games. Vanderbilt, Wyoming and you know, this was a situation where some on the outside thought they would have come in here and got rolled up yeah. 50 to nothing, but uh, that wasn't the case. I'll be interested to see how he feels about that. And on the flip side, how does Philip Fulmer think about getting a 27 to 10 win uh, here in the uh, Neyland Neal Stadium? Five. Yes, on the receiving team, half the distance to the goal, first down. Well, I think two things on that school of thought. First of all, for Orgeron, I think that he's got to be pleased with his defense and his offense. They came out here. My goodness, you can't play any harder than Patrick Willis did. Jamie Mitchell. I mean, they played hard football. And, and I think he's got to be pleased with the attitude that this kid showed. Yeah, they may have been out-talented a little bit. For Philip Fulmer, he's got to be pleased. This kid's responded. They gutted it out. Here's McSwain in the open field. Guys are breaking. He's got great speed. McSwain to midfield. Down to the 40. Jason Allen had to come from the far side of the field to drag him down. Hey, if he has 4-2-9, what's Jason Allen got? This was a great run. He breaks the tackle right there. Now runs through another one. And watch Jason Allen, number 18. See him right there. He is going to run him down. Jason Allen outran just about everybody I in know. Orange and McSwain. And Dave, he's the far side corner on the play. He's the right corner, top of your screen. 52 yard picked up by McSwain. Over the middle, here's Espy. He's got some room. Down to the 25 yard line. No timeouts for the Rebels. Boy, if, if Ole Miss could get a touchdown here, then they're going to make believers of themselves. Then they're going to come out and say, hey, we can move the football. <laughs> a lot of changing going on now by the yeah. uh, Tennessee defense. Well, this is a huge drive for them. If they can score here and get that, get that score. Got to bring big confidence in. Spurlock lost the football. Ole Miss will still have it, but uh, the clock will move. 1-15 now. Jesse Mahalona thought he created the turnover. Got the turnover. Boy, number 55 in that middle. I want to tell you something. He plays tough in there. He's just a bull in there. When uh, Spurlock steps up, you see 55 come over there. Oh, man, that, he had a chance. But Spurlock needs to stay in the pocket, or if he uses that roll, get outside. But uh, don't throw it into trouble. Spurlock back over the oh. middle. Grabbed by Espy down to the 15, 14-yard line. That'll stop the clock with the first down. How did he see Espy over there? Did you see that pass? That was, guy, that was the wildest pass I've seen. He's running out of bounds and almost flips the ball over to his right. And 
Heads up look. Now throw the ball to the end zone. You got 45 seconds. You got a new set of downs. Throw to the end zone. Spurlock passes incomplete. Boy, he ought to be glad he saw Omar Gaither step in front there. Tip my cap to uh, Michael Spurlock today with the broken hand and 16 out of 32 for 172 yeah. yards. One interception, a costly interception in the first quarter return for a touchdown. Yeah, Dave, that was just where he was trying to force the ball and get more than he really could. Now he's got Tay Biddle at the top of the screen, Dave, and one-on-one. -on -one. See if he can find Biddle. He has no safety help. See it right up there? Dead ball, false start, number 70 on the offense. Five-yard penalty, remain second down. Well, for this Ole Miss football team, Dave, coming up after this one, they'll have a chance to go home and enjoy homecoming, and the Citadel comes in, and then the Crimson Tide visit. This team, more than anything, I think, just needs a win. I don't, you know, regardless of the opponent, they just need that feeling of a win again. Absolutely. They've worked hard. Over the middle, Spurlock with a bullet. Kendrick can't hold on to it. 31 seconds to go in this game. Boy, and I, I thought Jason Allen was going to step in front of there. Jason Allen, he looked at it and just kind of raised his hands going, oh, no, I had a shot. Now just throw to the end zone. That's all you do. There is a look at that schedule we were talking about. Alabama waits in a couple of weeks in Kentucky, and then they finish uh, Auburn, Arkansas, LSU, and Mississippi State. <laughs> again we may not get out of Neyland Stadium today <laughs> that was Mahalona he said I think they're going on one <laughs> boy he smacked them I think they're going to get their five yards back Dead ball offside number 55 in the defense got into the neutral zone causing an offensive lineman to fall start five yard penalties third down <laughs> Philip Fulmer and company looking on with 31 seconds to play that trips to the top Spurlock will throw it oh no he won't he scrambles he's got some running room he'll throw it anyway pass is dropped in the end zone Boy, he had a shot. Well, that's exactly yep. what defensive coordinators hate about defending Michael Spurlock. You don't know if he's running, throwing, what he's doing. Exactly with right. He had trips to the top. Now, just move around. See Biddle in the back of the end zone. Throws it low. You'll see him he throws it low up front, but uh, had Biddle in the back of the end zone. Maybe that's where he should have gone. Fourth down, and the Rebels will go for it. Why not? Yeah. Pride on both sides. Pride on Tennessee to not let them score. Pride on Ole Miss to go for it on fourth down. Can't ask for anything more than that in a football game. Spurlock to the 10, to the 5. Down to the 2-yard line, but that will be a first down. That'll stop the clock with 9 seconds. They'll have a chance to run one more play with no timeouts. They hurry right up on the ball. That'll stop the clock for just a second. Yeah, he just spikes the ball, just trying to get time so he can look over, and see what coach wants him to run. On the other side of the ball, there's a lot of pride with John Chavis and his his defense. They do not want to allow him to score here. Second and goal. McSwain, the tailback. They'll throw it. Batted in the air and picked off. 
in the end zone. And that'll do it. Corey Campbell comes up with the interception with two seconds to play in the game. Well, he just tries to throw just a little in slant and he gets a hand in there. I'm not sure that might have been Jason Allen who got the hand in there on Tay Biddle. Look and see if yeah it was it was Allen's hand. Number 18 he got that hand in there. There it is. Spurlock will finish 18 of 35 with a couple of interceptions for 187 yards. Rick Clausen today, by the way, 18 out of 35 for 206. Gerald Riggs, 26 carries, 125 yards. And Miko McSwain, 13 for 66 on the ground. Espy with a huge day, receiving 10 catches for 102 yards. And with that knee, ball game is over. And Philip Fulmer and company win for the third time this year. They go to two and one in SEC play, but have won 12 straight over the Ole Miss Rebels. We will be back after this.